thought Arkansas's final Southwest Conference season would not be much of a success. But the Razorbacks aren't leaving the league without a fight. And a farewell tour of Dallas on New Year's Day is still possible. Although Texas Tech has trouble with the Hogs in Lubbock, the Red Raiders hope for a last chance happy ending to a long victory drought. Today, Arkansas and Texas Tech battle for the final time on Raycom. Southwest Conference Football, and it's brought to you by Southwest Airlines, celebrating 20 years of providing everyday low fares and convenient flights to many exciting destinations. Also brought to you in part by NCNB, by Keystone, by Dr. Pepper, and by Exxon Phase 4 Gasoline. Great football weather on the South Plains in Lubbock, Texas today. Jones Stadium where the Texas Tech Red Raiders will try to play spoiler against the Arkansas Razorbacks. And we welcome you to Lubbock. Dave Farnett along with Dave Rowe. Well, Arkansas controls its own destiny. If they win the rest of their games, they will put the Southwest Conference in their rearview mirror as the host team in Dallas at the Cotton Bowl on New Year's Day. However, the rest of that Southwest Conference family solidly behind Texas Tech and hoping that doesn't happen. Well, for Arkansas, it's a great position to be, and it really speaks highly of Jack Crow and his staff. Last year, they won one conference game. They only won three games all year, Dave. The tough task for Jack Crow and the Hawks today. They're down to their third quarterback, and he's a walk-on. Yeah, Wade Hill. What a story. A walk-on. Last week, he was just watching the Baylor game. All of a sudden, he's thrust into that football game. This week, he leads his team. He did not have a football scholarship. He was on an academic scholarship with a 4.0. And he will be challenged by two of the better safeties in college football. Oh, boy. And Dubisky and Tracy Saul, you have two of the best. Dubisky, Dubisky is the great run support. 17 tackles last week. And Saul, the center fielder six interceptions he got two last weekend history favors Arkansas they have won 15 of 16 meetings here in Lubbock the one loss cost them the Cotton Bowl 25 years ago and we'll return after this from Southwest Airlines Ever since Southwest Airlines extended our Friends Fly free sale people have gotten even friendlier Sugar Plum your favorite pillow if you make reservations and buy your round-trip ticket at our regular low, unrestricted fare, a friend gets to fly with you free all the way through February. Hey, Dad, seen the head shimmer? And now you can buy tickets till January 15th. Here's that putter I borrowed last year, old buddy. Southwest Airlines Friends Fly Free Sale. It's great for your pocketbook and your popularity. You gotta be kidding. <laughs> what's in is out, what's out is in. So many trends make my poor head spin. Don't sell me good taste, I know I taste good. While the best things are always so misunderstood. Just give me what the doctor ordered. Just what the doctor ordered. Just give me a doctor pepper, we want it. Whoa, just what the doctor ordered. The taste is made to order. We love it. Whoa, just what the doctor ordered. There is a new gasoline that is clearly advanced. A new gasoline that will give you the highest level of engine cleaning for high performance. A new gasoline formulated to clean fuel injectors and intake valves. Who has this new gasoline? You know. New Phase 4 gasoline from Exxon. For cleaner engines and high performance. Joe Stadium expected to see a crowd of about 35,000 or so for the final meeting between Arkansas and the Texas Tech Red Raiders. And here come the Hawks. <laughs> 
Arkansas at five and three and Tech at three and five and our weather conditions couldn't be much better than this 54 degrees 55 percent humidity a little breezy out of the southwest and it should remain sunny throughout the afternoon Jack Crow in his second year as the head coach at Arkansas eight and eleven and look at this series Tech has won five times in Fayetteville or Little Rock and once here but last year's game a classic Tech went up forty nine to twenty Quinn Grovey led an assault and they were thrown into the end zone as the gun sounded with a chance to pull it out now they don't want to get in that type of game today I can promise you Wade Hill the man in charge the sophomore walk on from Waldron Arkansas warming up on the hog sideline Arkansas won the toss and they will take the wind and uh, kick it to Texas Tech as Lance Ellison prepares to kick to either Donald Marshall or Rodney Blackshear. Ellison will have that big breeze behind him as Crow goes over last minute notes with the guy he hoped would not have to see any action this year. And this kick a beauty nine yards deep in the end zone and Marshall will take a knee and the Red Raiders will go from their 20 yard line. The Red Raider quarterback situation just the opposite of Arkansas finally starting to heal is Jamie Gill who's been out for a month with a couple of ailments but Robert Hall gets the start the sophomore from Dallas Carter a 46 percent passer five touchdowns and four interceptions on the year and a running and throwing threat maybe even a better threat when he has to scramble when he ad libs he is double dangerous and along with Hall in the Red Raider backfield Lynn and McDowell who Dyke said had his best game as a Red Raider last week and he scored his first career touchdown McDowell gets the call on first down and he will push forward for three yards doing the blocking for the Red Raiders they say Stacy Patrick has been their steadiest offensive lineman all year he is the sophomore from McAllen at left tackle and the Raiders going without a huddle and four wideouts three right one left as Hall makes the call at the line and looks over the middle for his tight end and is it picked off or not the Razorbacks say yes the officials say no I thought Owen Kelly trapped the ball on the ground. He's the nose man on the play, and he turned when he saw the play. It was tipped up in the air. Now watch the ball. You'll see 91. That's Owen Kelly. He's going to return back to the football right there. He was diving underneath. From that angle, it's hard to see. This angle is probably going to be a lot better. There's the ball, and watch him just see the ball did bounce on the ground. Give credit to Tyrone Chapman, the strong linebacker, for breaking that one up. So third and seven. Ball with time. First down grab and more. Anthony Stinnett to the 36 yard line. A pickup of 13 on third down. The NCNB starting defensive lineup for Arkansas. Henry Ford has really come on since they made him a starter at midseason. Leads him with five sacks and eight tackles for a loss. Sophomore from Fort Worth. Mick Thomas for the third straight year is going to lead this Arkansas defense in total tackles. Michael James, one of the top interceptors in the nation. He's got five this year. This will become a habit. There's no huddle look today for the Raiders. And Hall on target again. This is Blackshear. Out of an ankle tackle by Orlando Waters and then swarmed at the 45. And that banged up leg can't feel great after that happens. Well, when you're a senior and you're playing in your last game at home, you want to play well. And that's the type of competitor that Blackshear is. He didn't look hurt on that play to me. If he had been hurt, he would have just kind of jumped out of bounds. All delivering on target to Blackshear had the big day against Arkansas in Arkansas last year. That was good for nine. So on second and one, Anthony McDowell trying to gouge out that yard for the first down. But Dave, let me tell tell you why they go with no huddle. What they're trying to do is eliminate Arkansas from making those quick changes on different yardage situations. 
You can make them, but you're going to have to really hurry, as Arkansas is trying to do, but you can't make wholesale changes. They do get a nickel back in. Kerry Kennedy replaces the strong side linebacker, Chapman. McDowell did pick up the first down at the Raider 46. Boy, if you, you go, saw, oh. if you saw A&M TCU Thursday night, you saw Kyle McPherson take a hit just like this one from Quentin Corio. But when he comes across, the ball's high, and that's not where you want it if you're a receiver. Collins gives one of those, hello, how you doing there? How did Rodney Blackshear get up from there? Second and ten. protection and the grab at the 44 yard line Lloyd Hill's first catch of the day tackled by Michael James and Dave Robert Hall is getting a lot of time to stand back there and pick up on those crossing patterns they're the ones that open up a little bit later than the quick pops and he's finding them coming across because his offensive line's giving him all the time to pass Hill the sophomore from Modessa Fermian their leading receiver on the year, despite the fact his knee kept him out for uh, most of the first two, three games, and he's got 21 grabs for an average of 21 yards this year. They measure first down tech. Already Hall three of five. His outstanding performance against Rice in the last home game here two weeks ago set a new Raider school record for total yards 453 he is capable of that just about any Saturday and out of the backfield is Lynn off the spin move might have another first down well that was a well conceived and well hidden screen pass out to the flat they let the rush come right down the middle on him he slipped it out to the flat and picked up that first down Dave Lynn who has struggled in his senior year gives him first down and 10 at the 33 of Arkansas opening drive of the day and the Raiders on a steady march here's Hall and caught from behind by Henry Ford Easier said than done for the sophomore from Fort Worth Trimble Tech High School as we check our Southwest Airlines Red Raider must this afternoon. Well, Dave, every coach will tell you you have to pressure an inexperienced quarterback to get him thinking about pressure. Secondly, Tech played an outstanding game last week. One they should have won, but they missed three scoring opportunities. And Hall had a streak last week of 20 passes where he couldn't find a receiver. He has to be more consistent. Hall pass the play right there. McDowell to the 29. Ray Lee Johnson, they call the razor end. He is a junior from Fordyce, Arkansas. We checked the Dr. Pepper scoreboard for the first time today. NC State getting blitzed at home by Virginia. And an early surprise in Minneapolis. Third down. Raiders need six. And that one in the midst of uh, McDowell and two offensive linemen really near Jason Duvall, the left guard, than it was McDowell, and it'll be fourth and six. Well, there was the real difference between Jamie Gill and Robert Hall. Ro Jamie Gill, under that type of pressure, would have gone down. He's not as mobile a quarterback as Robert Hall. Would have taken about a 10-yard loss. As it is, Hall is right up there, fourth down. It's going to be about fourth down and seven or eight yards, but he saved a lot of distance on this field goal try. That leads the conference. That's third in the nation. 14 for 22 for Lynn Elliott. And his 48-yarder into the win, no problem. The Raiders take the opening drive down the field and lead 3-0.
Buying a new car involves some difficult decisions. Okay, let's see. Four-door? Uh, not two-door. Hey, maybe no doors. At NCNB, we don't think financing should be one of them. Well, you got to be kidding. That's why we've set up a loan information line. Call with your questions or stop by and see a loan specialist. Way too fast. Then move on to the really difficult decisions. Okay, red. No, blue. Maybe white. 1-800-ASK-NCNB. Two-tone? The loan source. Larry Zonka, three straight Super Bowls. After that, he went to sea. Sports personalities, as well as our own team of sports instructors, help host Norwegian Cruise Line cruises. No other cruise line has such an all-star lineup. Norwegian Cruise Line, the best vacation you've ever had. Plus, contact with someone like number 39, Larry Zonka. Nothing on the 48-yard field goal by Lynn Elliott. Boy, how far would that have gone if he had the win behind him? Boy, he really has had a fabulous year kicking. He's missed eight field goals, and he says six of those eight he missed by a foot or less. The old uh, goalpost width, he would be near perfect this year. He thinks he'd be now 21 of 23. He's unbelievable from 30 to 50 yards. Now he's 12 of 15 from that distance. Freddie Bradley, junior from Park, California, with a school record return year is the deep man. And his good kick will be picked up at the 13-yard line. And the return to the 24 for Lee Keith, the backup wide receiver. So we will see for the first time as a starter, the sophomore from Waldron, Arkansas, Wade Hill. Very big, as you can see, 63203, a rocket arm. And a razor-sharp mind. He was the Scholar Athlete of the Year as a senior high school in Arkansas. On an academic scholarship, he was a high school valedictorian. He's carrying a 4.0 in secondary education. And the Hogs hope that transfers to football talent. E.D. Jackson takes the pitch and may have a first down to the 34. And the Hogs, who will line up along with Wade Hill. Jackson, the junior tailback from Kilgore, Texas. Dickerson and Caldwell, the wideouts. And up front, an injury problem at left guard. Tommy Jones starting for Straczynski. Mark Henry, we will watch all day because he has the matchup with the fine nose tackle for Tech Fred Petty. You might think that with the lack of experience for Hill, this would be a very watered-down game plan. Not so. They've given him pretty much what they would have given Jason Allen if he were healthy. That was really surprising in our talks with the coach that they turned around and said, hey, we're going to have an offense just like we normally run. Maybe a little bit more conservation on the pass, but if we're able to run the ball, we're going to run every play we can. Jack Crow thought he had it going with Allen until he toured two knee ligaments and underwent surgery this week. Jackson picked up nine and three quarters. So second down. And it will be third and short. Kerwin Price turned away. Big 228-pound senior fullback from East St. Louis, Illinois, hit hard by Harry Dias as we check the Red Raider defensive front. Dias, Petty, and Jackson. Petty with... Nine tackles and a sack at Austin last week. Steve Carr, 18 tackles, 10 solos against the Horn. And you know already what Tracy Saul can do. Two interceptions last week. He is third in the nation with six on the year. Hogs will have a first down over the 35 is Tony Jeffrey, the backup to Jackson at tailback. And even though he's a backup, he is Crow's leading rusher with 505 yards on the year. Virginia adds another score at NC State. Up by 25 in the second quarter. 
Dave, one of the things that Hill has to do is he has to gain his confidence early. And he's going to do that with this running game. If he can pick up three or four first downs, he'll gain a lot of confidence. Jackson, right side to the 40. And he is hit there by the outside linebacker, Brian Gerlich, who had an interception last week. The Arkansas team must today. Well, first of all, we talked about Wade Hill needs to have things go right for him early. He needs to run that option with success, complete some early passes. Kiss, that's the game plan. Keep it short and simple. And Arkansas plays a better game when the score is low. They don't want to get into a game like last year, Dave, where it's just up and down the field. Yeah, you figure they have very little chance in a game like that. Jackson again right side. Backs his way to the 42. He got something out of what looked like nothing there. Lissio put the hit on him from outside linebacker. And for Arkansas, it'll be third down and five. Dave, this is almost assuredly the first pass situation you're going to see Hill in. Now, the decision for Jack Crow is, are they going to blitz me? Do I need to throw it quickly? Or can I look downfield and pick up that 15 to 18-yard pass? They send Paul Well in motion and run the option. And Freddie Bradley will have another Arkansas first down to the 47. For an instant, it looked like he might bust that one. Well, that's a surprise to me. Third down and five yards, six yards is a definite pass situation. But this is the way you gain confidence. You run down the line, make that good decision, an excellent pitch outside, and you pick up the first down. That really helps your entire offensive unit because it lets your lineman look back at your quarterback and say, hey, he's doing a good job. Yeah, a whole collective sigh of relief from his teammate. Bradley stays in as the give goes to the fullback, Price, and he's at midfield. As always, glad to have Prime Network with us and its nationwide family of regional sports cable networks. 3-0 Texas Tech, 7-43 and counting in the first quarter from Lubbock. Price at five and a half yards per carry, leading Arkansas this year, has the Hogs at midfield, second down. And Bradley stopped for a loss. Lissio got him high. Dias got him low. What a play by Donnie Brooks, the outside player on that, to come up and stuff the guard on the lead. He's really what made the play turn back in and cause the loss. As always, at the conclusion of today's game, Dave and I announced the Southwest Airlines player of the game. Arkansas Drive has picked up two third downs so far on two tries. This will be a tough one. They need nine. And Hill wants to go to the air. The ball deflected by Lucio, intended for Bradley. Mike Lucio foiling the attempt for the first down completion by Hill. We see one of the top 10 punters in the nation. Pete Rather with that average at nearly 43 yards is only third in the Southwest Conference. This is a great year for punters. Saul is deep. Raiders get the block. Steve Carr picked up by Sean Jackson. That could have been blocked by three or four guys up the middle. They got great penetration. Look at the number of black shirts right up the middle. One, two, three, four, five black shirts. Watch how quickly they're on them. Nobody got their blocks up front. McDowell on first down for no gain. The Arkansas coaches will look at that on film, and I'm not sure who they'll blame first. 
because well, the, the whole wall broke down. It certainly was. I don't think that Arkansas thought that they were going to rush him that time. The linemen take it a little bit easier when you don't think that you're going to get that hard rush. All of a sudden, Tech came just roaring up through the middle. Carr returned to block punt for a touchdown earlier this year at Wyoming. This time he gets the block. And Hall on second and ten to the sideline. And the catch made at the 21-yard line by Vincent Brandon. Ninth grab of the year for the sophomore from Waco. And Vincent Brandon ought to point back at Robert Hall because Hall threw that ball before Brandon made his release. In other words, he hadn't made his cut. Now he's made his cut. All of a sudden, now he picks up the football, and it is a perfectly thrown ball right on the sideline. Ohio State back in front now with the score of Minnesota. Hall with an outstanding start here in the first quarter. And we see Byron Bam Morris for the first time as the lone setback. Hall keeps. At the Arkansas 14. Where Tyrone Chapman brought him down. 64 yards a game from your quarterback. And in a lot of offenses, that's pure gravy. In this one, it's gravy. They don't expect that from Gill. Well, they certainly didn't. Hall's got that ability to go down the line when he reads that option. He sees that seam where he can pick up a sure three to four yards. It's a great knack of just putting the ball away and getting the safe three or four yards rather than pitch it. He can go all the way, too. Broke a 70-yard scramble against Rice. This is Morris, who has really emerged from midseason on, and he cracks the 11. That's what he needed for the first, and he may have it. Morris, the freshman from Cooper, getting the yards that they expected the senior Lynn to get. It has not been much of a senior year for Lynn, but Morris averaging 5.3 yards per carry. Well, I can tell you one thing that Spike Dykes told his team. We are not going to miss scoring opportunities this week like we did last week. They are in four-down territory, assuredly at least a field goal. Third and a short one. Morris straight up the middle. First down. And they would, you would think, prefer to do it on the ground. Last week, they threw into the Texas end zone 11 times. They were 0 for 11 with two interceptions. And I know one young man that would love to have another shot at that, that play last week. Ryan Hooper, who missed that out pattern, he had a sure touchdown. Nine fell incomplete. The other two fell into enemy hands. And uh, Hooper has had all week to try and get over that memory. Robert Hall with a strike to Rodney Blackshear for his third touchdown grab of the year. He parted Orlando Waters wide open in the end zone. Well, when he made when he made that cut back inside, he was wide open. Didn't look as if uh, Hall was going to go to anyone else on that play. Hooper, the holder, Elliott remains perfect. 19 of 19 on PATs this year, and it is 10 nothing Tech. And I'll tell you this: if Rodney Blackshear is hurt. He certainly hasn't shown it today. He's on the left of your screen. He's going to just run a quick post. And you can see Hall come back off the line. I mean, he zeroes in on Blackshear all the way. There's the cut. Now watch the cut. He's got him out there. Fakes inside. Gets inside position. He's got him right now. And Hall picks him up. There are scouts from at least four NFL teams watching this game today. They just got an eyeful from an outstanding prospect. Gotta be kidding. Woo. What's in is out, what's out is in. So many trends make my poor head spin. Don't sell me good taste, I know why taste good. While the best things are always so misunderstood. Just give me what the doctor ordered. Just what the doctor ordered. Just give me a doctor pepper, we want it. Whoa. Just what the doctor ordered. The taste is made to order. We love it.
Driving after a few drinks is crazy. Don't wreck your life. There is a place where luxury and affordability collide in a most comfortable way. A place where the charm of a romantic fishing village meets the luxury of a paradise resort. The one place that's two places at once. Ex Stapa Zibotaneo. The uh, demise of Rodney Blackshear's sore leg grossly exaggerated. <laughs> You think I'll ever listen to that coach again? He told, no, I mean, I had tears in my eyes when he told me that Blackshear wouldn't even play. That will be covered in the end zone by Bradley, and the Hogs will start at their 20. I know you're an emotional guy, but I mean, no, pull yourself I'll, together. Well, in my conversations yesterday with offensive coordinator Dick Winder, he said, hey, he said, he's not going to play. He said, uh, if he does play at all, he's going to be about maybe 60, 70%. So, Man, what a mm. I'm not going to listen to anything he says anymore. I'm going right to the head coach. Wade Hill had Arkansas moving before his third down pass was batted by Lissio. Then, of course, the punt block by Carr, which led to the touchdown. And first down, Price will squeeze out a foot or so. Let's pause briefly for station identification. This is the Raycom Network. Under four minutes to go first quarter on just a gorgeous autumn afternoon at Jones Stadium in Lubbock for Texas Tech has sprinted to attend a nothing lead. And walk on Wade Hill, engineer, quick pitch, got it off well. Tony Jeffrey belted after a pickup by two, and it was Lissio and Wingo combining. Wingo with his 100th tackle of the year here. Dave, one of the things that we talked about with the coach is that they had to play with that same intensity. And that's what Tech is doing. They're playing with great enthusiasm. Look at the number of people in the picture right, guys, making that up. tackle. We have the top two tacklers in the conference from last year, both on the field today. Wingo trailed only Mick Thomas of Arkansas. On third and eight, option right to Bradley. Cut back, and he will be, I think, about a half yard short. Which will uh, cause the Hogs to collectively hold their breath because that would bring up another putting situation. Brian Gerlich chased down Bradley. And Pete Rather will try again and hope for better protection. Saul will stand at his 30. The nation's 10th leading putter kicking to the nation's 8th leading punt returning. And does he sail this one? Right out of the page of Mark Bounds' playbook, 71 yards. That's not his best of the year. Not by a long shot. He's boomed an 83-yarder this year. There's something coming down from the Rockies, where the air is dry and cold, where cold, clear water runs off the ice and snow. A new beer called Coors Dry, double chilled to lock in the dry cold, then kept cold from the Rockies to your store to give you a finish as clean as ice. New Coors Dry, feel the chill. At Exxon, we think of engines as precise works of art, moving sculptures that come to life with stunning grace. We believe every engine deserves an enduring, powerful life. We believe every engine deserves a motor oil that offers uncompromising protection for a flawless performance. Exxon Superflow Motor Oil. For uncompromising protection against engine wear.
says she waits by the truck because she can't stand to see me get hurt. And that makes two of us. Here's to rodeo cowboys, the women who love them, and cowboy cut jeans. Wrangler. Tech leads 10 to nothing. Dave, at some point, Arkansas is going to have to show at least the threat of a passing attack as they're pretty well teeing off on the running attack. That's exactly what they're doing. You find it as you don't have the threat to pass, those safeties and those linebackers start to creep up, and pretty soon you've got 11 guys standing in about a seven-yard area. So you've got to loosen up with that pass, and they've got to throw some. They don't have any question about the physical ability of Hill. But until last week when he got thrown in in the Baylor game, Following Jason Allen's knee injury, he had really, for all practical purposes, never faced live action. And one of his late game interceptions happened when a Baylor rusher had a hand in his face. He's got to get used to that. Anthony Lynn stays on his feet and picks up eight. Tyrone Chapman and Michael James combined on the stop on Anthony Lynn, who lost 10 pounds to try and get a little quicker this year. Here's what he did at Arkansas last year, but he hasn't had a game even approaching that level of uh, breakaway ability this year. 3.3 yards per carry. Big difference between Lynn and Morris. Morris, a cutback runner, doesn't necessarily have to have a big hole. Lynn really does to get him started. Second and two, there's McDowell for the first down to the 35. Dave, there's a good example of what they really like about McDowell. He does not go down with initial contact. He was in that pile, someone grabbed his leg, and he had enough balance to, again, pull that leg out and pick up an additional two to three yards. No one has brought him down for a loss this year. Showed the whole package in Austin last week. The blocking, nine carries for 46 yards. Good receiver out of the backfield. Lynn, that time, shows some cutback ability. Picks up a couple. So Tech with the 10-0 lead. If you're going to go conservative, into the win, under a minute to go in the first quarter, might as well, and then turn it around and get the win. Well, run a couple plays, use that clock up, get in the second period with that wind at your back. Arkansas certainly has not taken advantage of that wind at their back in this first period. They pulled Blackshear, and Jeff Hume in at tight end. Paul rolling right, throws right, has Lloyd Hill, and Waters will wrap him up as Collins and James arrive for help on what should be the final play of the first quarter. You know what's interesting about passing into the wind? A lot of quarterbacks like to pass into a light wind, especially when you throw that bullet because the ball just goes cleanly through the air right to the receiver. Some quarterbacks, if they're going to throw long, of course, like that wind at their back where they can lay the ball up. But if you're a drill passer and you throw that spiral, that tight spiral, a lot of times you like just to pass into that, just that gentle breeze like we have today. End of the first in Lubbock. And the Raider hopefuls celebrate a 10-0 lead over Arkansas. Rodney DeYoung reminds you, time is running out. If you're driving without auto liability insurance, you may think you're in good hands, but oh, are you gonna get flattened. No insurance can mean big fines and big trouble when you get caught. So before you drive even one more time, get insurance by phone from Rodney DeYoung before your time runs out. Call 943-7303 today. Think young, Rodney DeYoung. If you're looking for a way to beat those old car blues, your Isuzu dealer's got the right Isuzu for you. Now's the right time for year-end savings on selected 91 Isuzu cars and trucks, like the versatile Isuzu Trooper LS, priced at up to $1,800 off during the Isuzu for You sale. Info stylist, pick up Trooper, rodeos too. Your Isuzu dealer's got the right Isuzu for you. Save on a Trooper at your local Dallas-Fort Worth Metroplex Isuzu dealer. When news matters, it matters where you get your news. ABC News. More Americans get their news from ABC News than from any other source.
Rodney D. Young reminds you, time is running out. Don't wait until it's too late. Get auto liability insurance now. Call Rodney D. Young. Porter will begin with Texas Tech on top of Arkansas, 10 nothing, and looking at third and a short one from their 44-yard line. <laughs> here's here's something I guarantee you has never been seen on television anywhere before. And on third down, it is Lynn, and he might have coughed it up along the sideline. He did. Arkansas recovers. He had the first down. But he couldn't make it all the way down with the ball. And it'll be Arkansas taking over at the Raider 48 yard line. What's the tail end of this play when he tries to go up and over is where he loses control of. See the ball laying on the ground. It's right by the sideline. In came someone didn't go out of bounds and recovered it inbounds. The hit was by Kirk Collins and it looked like Michael James was the hog who fell on it. And Crow hopes that translates into an offensive spot. The reverse to Caldwell. He is a speedster and he's got room. Gerlich with a saving tackle at the 29 yard line. You wouldn't believe we've got one of the best blocks on that play. It was Hill, the quarterback. Once he flipped the ball off, when he ran around, he picked up one of the linemen. See, if maybe perhaps we can see this. He flips off now. See, he ducks out of the picture. When he comes around here, you'll see him right there. That's his block. You don't see quarterbacks throwing blocks many times to spring running backs. Caldwell with a 4-4 speed. First and 10, Arkansas. 29-yard line. And he drills to Ron Dickerson. Anthony Wiley had the coverage, and Dickerson near the 20 on his 21st catch of the year. He is Arkansas's receiving leader after making the switch from tailback this year. Our first quarter numbers will have a distinct black and red tint to them. 115 to 34 in total yards. And that passing yard uh, category, what we're talking about, they have to at least make Tech respect the pass. New fullback is Chris Kirby. Sophomore from Pine Bluff hit hard at the 20. The Razorbacks are without Carlton Calvin. The true freshman from Keller, Texas, out with an ankle injury, so it's Price and Kirby at fullback this week. This is a huge uh, third down situation. You want to keep that offensive flow. You want to keep that offensive uh, it, just kind of a, the warmth that they have as they drip, driven the ball now 20, 30 yards. You want to keep this drive going. And they go full house in the backfield and they give to Freddie Bradley. He needed just a shade over a yard and he got two. So the drive still alive at the Tech 18. Bradley broke most of O.J. Simpson's National Junior College rushing records before transferring to Arkansas this year as a junior. This Arkansas offense last rated in the Southwest Conference by a long shot. They are 60 yards behind the eighth rated offense, SMU. They average 273 per game. Texas Tech calls a timeout here with 13.05 in the first half. We'll take it with them as the Raiders try to protect the 10 0 advantage. Back after this from Southwest Airlines. to rise and shine, fun seekers. Southwest Airlines fun fairs are back. Well, you waited so long for a fair to get so nice and low. Really now. now you really should fly. Light up the night. Southwest Airlines' new fun fairs are so low. Want to see that again? Now you can fly just for the fun of it. Because we got a lot of things to do now. now you really should fly. How to improve your home involves some difficult decisions. You know, we could use a bigger kitchen. Nuh-uh. A new bath. Uh-uh. Kitchen. A new bath. We could use a... At NCNB, we don't think financing should be one of them. Okay, a bath. Upstairs. Upstairs. That's why we've set up a loan information line. Call with your questions or stop by and see a loan specialist. Then tell us what's on your mind. 
Okay, I got it. A garage. Uh-uh, a deck. A garage. 1-800-ASK-NCNB. Sweetheart. The loan source. Yes? I want a deck. Here's today's Game Tracer brought to you by the Schick Tracer. Arkansas 56 rushing, only six passing yards. Recovered a fumble to start this quarter. Hall through the air 7 to 10, and the block punt by Carr led to the touchdown pass to Blackshear. Ten nothing check, but Arkansas has first and ten at the Red Raider 18. You think they'll be able to punch it in, or will they have to go to the end? I'll be very surprised if Arkansas is able to run every play to get this ball in the score. I think they have got to pass at least once or twice on this drive. Notre Dame and Tennessee underway. Jackson and Kirby in the eye. Play action, and Hill looks over the middle, too tall, intended for Dickerson. And he had company over there. Tight coverage by Dubisky and Brooks. Well, again, there's, there's no question about the strength in that right arm, but there is uh, already some war wounds on that right arm. For <laughs> well, I thought I saw it. it was either a piece of tape or blood on the uh, on his bicep on his right arm. He would be a freshman athletically, but they played him in one JV game last year. That cost him a whole year of eligibility. Dickerson in motion, second and ten. And Jackson inside the 15, where Steve Carr makes the pop. Carr right behind Wingo, 1-2 as the Tech tackling leaders. They'll get a lot of action today with that inside running game of Arkansas. Boy, they are big hitters. I can hear that smack in the pads all the way up here in the booth. When Carr comes up and Wingo at those two inside spots, I mean, they just throw everything into the tackle. Extra wide out, Lee Keith in on third down. And another reverse this time, it is Dickerson first down to the six-yard line. There was great pursuit over there by the nose tackle, Fred Petty, or Dickerson might have taken it in. This, I think, was a double reverse. The quarterback starts out. Now, here's the, here's the first part of the reverse. Now, here's the second. This is the double reverse. And Dickerson is able to jump at the end here and just kind of go over top of the pile and pick up the first down. A quick pair of touchdowns for the Irish as Freddie Bradley pushes forward for maybe one. It'll be second and goal. Not that surprising that Jack Crow goes deeper into the playbook today. Because uh, he's got to think plain vanilla will not necessarily do it early. He's got to get the hill uh, on track somehow. Absolutely. In my conversations with Jack yesterday, I said to him, Coach, are you going to give him a hit chart on his arm so he'll be able to look down and pick up the plays? And he said, he's a very intelligent young man. You wouldn't believe how quickly he picked up our offense this week. He said, we will signal in plays some of the plays for him, but we're going to let him make a lot of decisions. Full house backfield, E.D. Jackson. One more yard, and it'll be third and goal from the three. He was turned back by Brian Dubisky, the strong safety. Dave, one of the hearts of this defense for Tech is Matt Wingo, 45. He just reads the play. There he is. He's like a mid-center fielder there. Slides, sees the blocks. Now watch. He's got to step up and make the play, and he is there all the time. What a football player. Trevor Cobb's blocking back in high school at... Pasadena Doby. Third and goal. Hill on the option will keep and get to the one, but no further. Big decision for Jack Crow whether to go for the sure three points in this situation. He's right in the middle of the field for the chance to touchdown. Well, the only other time Texas Tech beat Arkansas here in Lubbock, it took in part a big goal line stand to do it. And they're trying to do it here. That game cost Arkansas the Cotton Bowl. This one could, too. Freddie Bradley for the touchdown.
That was just vintage Freddie Bradley. Power play off tackle. You just get everybody going there. They didn't they didn't come out and try the option. They didn't fake into the line. They just said, hey, we're going to beat you with what we do best, and that's power football. They ran off tackle for the touchdown. So a four-point game, and Todd Wright, who is 9 of 11 on extra points this year, can make it 10 to 7 and does. First touchdown of the year. First touchdown as a Razorback for Freddie Bradley. Good line surge there. Excellent block by the up back, too, on, on the outside person. Arkansas needed that, and they cash in Anthony Lynn's fumble to come back within three. There is a new gasoline that is clearly advanced. A new gasoline that will give you the highest level of engine cleaning for high performance. A new gasoline formulated to clean fuel injectors and intake valves. Who has this new gasoline? You know. New Phase 4 gasoline from Exxon. For cleaner engines and high performance. In striped suits and high heel shoes, the daily grind gives them all the blues. Don't work me over, I know what works good. While the best thing go is so misunderstood. Just give me what the doctor ordered. Just what the doctor ordered. Just give me a Dr. Pepper, we want it. Whoa, just what the doctor ordered. But taste the fade to order. We love it. About 50 years ago, folks out here needed help with insurance. And since Farm Bureau's whole purpose was to help, they organized insurance companies. Now, from the outset, these companies were committed to being conservative. And the result has been a tradition of strength and stability respected across the country. Now, through the years, Farm Bureau has grown and added lots of innovative services, but that stability never changed. And stability is why you can trust Farm Bureau today. Freddie Bradley has brought Arkansas back within three. Ten to seven game with 9.54 remaining in the first half. As Lance Ellison, a true freshman from Conway, Arkansas, will kick to Marshall or Blackshear into the wind, and it won't get any, anywhere near Marshall and Blackshear. The return begins at the 23-yard line. And uh, Bruce Hill... Drop for a return loss of one yard. The Arkansas scoring drive after Lynn's fumble goes 11 plays and 48 yards. And so much for the wind being a factor. Every point has been scored into the wind here in the first half. Well, again, that, that drive was set up by that turnover forced by the defense. Their defense, Arkansas's defense, has set up three turnovers a game, they average. Whistles as Blackshear gets about a five-yard head start on the rest of his uh, Raider cohorts. They wore the red jerseys, by the way, in their last home game against Rice. It worked. They blew out the Owls back to the basic black this week, and it'll be first and 15. That's, that's a tough coaching job for a guy like Dykes who asked for and got about everything in terms of pure effort he could get from his team last week, and it didn't pay off. Well, I said to him, I said, what did you say to your team, Coach, Sunday when you met? So I told him what a great job they did. The only thing we didn't do is we didn't win on the scoreboard. But he felt and his staff felt that they beat Texas every way they could. Well, incomplete as Mackenzie Phillips put on the pressure. It was intended for Blackfield. Second and 15. What a story Mackenzie Phillips is. Almost died in high school. In fact, clinically, he was dead for 13 minutes. He had an asthma-induced heart attack on the field in a high school game for spring day. 33% normal lung capacity they measured. Didn't play it all last year. They figured he was done. They had him on a new medicine, which he takes 25 times every day. And he's not only back, but excelling this year. And let me tell you about his dad, who I played with, Lloyd Phillips. He's an Outland Trophy Award winner at Arkansas. What a football player he was. Today, he's a principal, I believe, at a junior high school in Arkansas. Paul quarterback draw straight down the pipe. 
close for a first down. At any moment, he can go on it. Well, this almost looks like a quarterback draw initially. See, he steps back. Now he, does, he got a quick flush, and he's out of the pocket and picks up that yardage downfield. It's hard sometimes to determine whether that is a set play or whether he just takes off and does it on his own. Third and a short one, Byron Morris. First down and a lot more into Arkansas territory at the 48. 21 yards for Bam Morris. What Morris does so well here is he's running right along the sidelines and has a chance to step out of bounds, but he makes a great cut right here, back inside. Right there, he's going to plant, get back inside, and picks up an additional 8 to 10 yards. He got a couple of clearing blocks there. You got to credit Lewis Sheffield first and Rodney Blackshear second for giving him that space. But they will mark it at the 38. And Blackshear wrapped up hard by Orlando Waters at the 49. On that last play, I was talking about how close Morris was. Watch that left foot well, right there. He was out of bounds. He was out of bounds before this cut. Evidently, the official did not see it because they gave him the mark, didn't they, all the way downfield? They did originally, and then last instant, here they come back. It'll be second and one. Blackshear, the lone wide out. He comes left. Two tight ends and Sheffield in motion. Play action for Hall. All day to deliver. And the tight end, Jeff Hume, has his sixth catch of the year. That feels great for a guy who walked on at Arkansas before transferring to Tech. Well, for Robert Hall, this has got to be like seven on seven at practice when you don't have the lineman in there because he is standing back there with all the time he needs to pick up the crossing patterns. He can go deep. He hasn't had any pressure to speak of all game. Arkansas wanted to be a more aggressive defense this year, and they are. But not aggressive enough to go heavily to blitzes, and that passed right through the hands of Anthony Stinnett. Banks was in the area, but it caromed hard enough off Stinnett that he could not reach back and get the interception. Second and 10, 8.37 in the first half, 10-7. Raiders over the Hogs. Lynn in motion. Now they come after Hall, and that will draw a flag. Kurt Collins for pass interference. Blackshear, the intended receiver. When Hall comes up to the line, Dave, he has a rhythm that just, it sometimes just baffles defenses. He stands back at the fullback, makes his decision. Now he walks up, and so many times he takes that quick snap. This time he walks up, he takes a longer snap, and they show the blitz. He sees the blitz, throws the ball quickly, and the result is the interference, and of course now a first down. But that's what Jack Crow did not want to see Hall get into that rhythm where you just come up to the line, call the play, make it, go, go, go. He has to do something to break up that rhythm. There is the back to four wideouts. And go on the ground. Anthony Lynn to the 27 of Arkansas as we pause briefly for station identification on the Raycom Network. This is Channel 8, WFAA-TV, Dallas, Fort Worth. Jones Stadium in Lubbock saw Texas Tech take an early 10 to nothing lead and Arkansas come right back on a scoring run by Freddie Bradley. Now the Raiders try to mount their response. Second and eight, Paul. Wide open is Lloyd Hill, first down at the Arkansas 12-yard line.
Hey, this is a, a designed seam pass right off the ball. Hill's on the bottom. He's going to cut right there, and now he's right in the seam. The ball is delivered perfectly. The safety has got to come up quicker to stop that. That's just great coordination between your quarterback and your wide out. And what's so impressive about Hill and Blackshear with all the speed and the moves they have, no fear about going over the middle. Lynn. Off one tackle and in for the touchdown. from Kirk Collins coming up that time. I mean, they just met, bam, I could hear it way up here. And Lynn kept that balance and just snuck in and dove on the pylon in the corner of the end marker. Lynn Elliott's kick is good, and the third touchdown run of the year by Lynn puts Tech back up by 10. Watch Collins come in here. He's going to be 29. He is really going to stick Lynn. When he breaks outside right there, bam! But he didn't wrap him up. And watch Lynn again. Just dive for that pylon. Just break the plane of the goal line. He came real close to stepping out of the two. Just does hit that pylon. And we're back after this from Southwest Airlines. Ever since Southwest Airlines extended our Friends Fly free sale, people have gotten even friendlier. Sugar Plum, your favorite pillow. If you make reservations and buy your round-trip ticket at our regular low, unrestricted fare, a friend gets to fly with you free all the way through February. Hey, Dad, seen the head trimmer? And now you can buy tickets till January 15th. Here's that putter I borrowed last year, old oh, buddy. Southwest Airlines Friends Fly Free Sale. It's great for your pocketbook and your popularity. Enemy on the open. Moving up on your right, Bravo 2. I'm 30 miles from the action, but I'm responsible for a digital communication link between headquarters and brigade. Enemy tank, checkpoint one. If the data isn't programmed right, 5,000 troops could be cut off. Enemy forces together. But I'd never let that happen to my brigade. I'm for it, is eliminated. Be all that you can be. You did it, sir. Outstanding. Get it is your life in the army. I'm Bill McDavid. During our 91 demonstrator and clearance sale, Every 91 Pontiac, Honda, Acura, GMC, Lincoln, Mercury, and Subaru is clearance priced. You'll get the best deal and the best service in Texas. Don't miss our 91 clearance sale at Bill McDavid Pontiac, Honda, Acura, GMC, Lincoln, Mercury, Subaru, Fort Worth, and Arlington. Our 91 clearance sale, a Texas tradition, right wide track. <laughs> a four-point favorite up by ten and this may be a much higher scoring game than anybody expected today even the saddle trance Elliot will try and hang this one high with that 20 mile an hour gust and wow. <laughs> that is a good ten yards beyond the end line and it might have split the uprights whoa First and 10 off the Arkansas 20 on Elliott's touchback kick. The nine play drive went 78 yards. And Lynn just did squeak his way down the sideline, 12 yards for the score. Wade Hill for Arkansas has only attempted three passes. He has hit one for six yards to Ron Dickerson, who goes in motion. This is the tailback Tony Jeffrey. No relation to the former TCU Horn Frog. Tony Jeffrey picks up about four. Anthony Wiley from left cornerback for the tackle. Well, one thing a young quarterback will most likely do in a situation like this is start to get a little bit antsy, start to panic, start to think he has to get the big play. I'm sure on the sideline, Jack Crow and his crew have told him, don't panic in this situation. Stay cool, stay under control, and stay with our game plan. Lee Keith in, they pull the tight end Lindsay. 
but keep it on the ground. And he dropped it. Bradley coughed it up. Raiders have it at the 28 of Arkansas. Harry Dias, the left defensive end. The hit that initiated that fumble came from Steve Carr, whose blocked punt led to the first Tech touchdown. Watch when he runs through here. He has a lot of room. He doesn't meet yeah. Carr until the tail end of the play. But right there, he reaches in. Now, there the ball comes loose, and it's just ripped out. Bias had transferred from Hutchinson Community College in Kansas last year against Arkansas. Good look at what the Raiders rolled up in that 49-44 win. Hall on the scramble inside the 20-yard line before Orlando Waters prevents further damage. And Hall made two decisions that time. He was first he was going to run inside, then all of a sudden he made a little adjustment and ran outside for the to, to pick up the yardage. Best day on the ground, 11 carries, 87 yards, and two touchdowns against Rice. And timeout with 6.37 to play in the first half. Coming up at halftime, test your knowledge of the Southwest Conference with the Southwest Airlines Trivia Tester. We visit with the new Texas Tech tra track coach, Olympic gold medal winner, Louise Ritter. She is in charge of the new the uh, Texas Tech women's track team here will talk about her new job and will meet this week's classroom champion. All this plus first half highlights coming up at halftime. Well, around the Southwest Conference, our uh, Raycom updates for the week. Texas not allowing uh, any fourth quarter touchdowns this year. They have outscored their opponents 42 to 6. If they could just do that in the first quarter, they might be undefeated. They've got Houston at the Astrodome later on today. Rice with Trevor Cobb needing 89 yards to break the school record he set last year. Raiders go on first and 10. And again, Hall on the ground for about three to the 14. Well, when he rolls on that pocket and has that run pass option, boy, that is just deadly. If you're one of those defensive backs and you're covering, you don't know when to leave your man and come up. You have to wait for him to go across the line of scrimmage, and it's too late. Michigan making short work with Northwestern, which has pulled a couple of major upsets this year already. Second and six. Morris, second up. thinking about what may be barring a big Arkansas comeback the key play of this game that fumbled by Bradley they had already fallen back down by 10 and Elliott can make it 24 7 Texas Tech one thing any defensive coach will tell you is don't arm tackle you've got to get your head in there you got to get your body watch Morris when he rumbles through here watch the number of arms Arm tackle there, arm tackle there. He breaks through two more. There's another arm tackle, and it doesn't even pull him down until he's in the end zone. You've got to get your body in front to stop a compact runner. He's six foot one, about 235 pounds. You're not just going to swat him down. Yeah, a good hint that he's not going to be brought down by arm tackles. Any guy named Bam, <laughs> it's just not going to work. And Tech breaks it wide open here, midway, second quarter. Third touchdown of the year for Byron Morris. Without a doubt, the Tech offensive surprise of the year as a freshman. And can 
Elliott put it into the not whole game section this time. An optimistic Freddie Bradley standing at the goal line. And uh, comparatively weak effort, a mere three yards beyond the end zone this time. Now, Arkansas, do they have to go to the pass? Well, I think now's the time. They have got to have some positive things happen before this halftime. You don't want to go in 24 to 7. Even though you can think back on last year when they had that great second half scoring barrage, you still want to end on a positive note. They have not been able to move the ball with any consistency on a drive. Really, the only touchdown they got was a gift from Texas Tech with great field position in their own territory. All well in motion. Jackson and Price in the eye. E.D. Jackson for five yards. And what Crow would hope for is a drive that will consume the rest of the 542 remaining in the half. Get him into the locker room with something positive to talk about. Make it 24-14 and 10-point deficit is uh, something they can they can work with in the second half. But he did not want to get into a scoring battle. And that's what he's in. Jackson for the first down. Back to basics for the Arkansas offense. And if I'm a defensive player, I'm standing over there. I'm going to say, go ahead and run all you want. Hey, there's a quick surprising score. 21 nothing in the first period. That was supposed to be a lot more competitive than that early. And Florida State getting ready for their battle with number two, Miami. First and 10 from the 31 for the Razorbacks. Pitch to Jackson. And Lissio reacting quickly to hold Jackson to a gain of about three. Well, Lissio is the type of football player that does a lot out there. He's got good movement along the line. He fights off blocks well. Now, he's on the, he's on the tight end. He has to fight him off, get good balance, get back inside, good base. That's an excellent play by Mike Lissio. He'll be back next year, as will Carr and Kirkpatrick. Only one of the four linebackers graduating, and that's Wingo. That's a major hole they'll have to fill next year. Bradley in for Jackson at the tailback spot. He'll play action. Just does get it off in time. And a stretching grab by Kirk Botkin. What a job. His 11th catch of the year. Well, this has got to be a confidence builder for Hill. Under a lot of pressure that time, he threw that ball as he, as he was getting hit. Watch the pressure right up the middle. He's going to throw it, falling away. He doesn't see the completion. Watch Botkin stretch out there, gets control. Excellent play. Here's the pressure that Hill is under against right up the middle and throws it and gets hit, pushed away. Ringo came on a blitz. Hill was on target in his first and 10 from the 48. And slipping at his 44 is Bradley. I think even had he kept his footing that time, Sean Jackson would have popped him for a loss one way or the other. Boy, and hasn't Sean Jackson been a surprise this year? Only a sophomore, but he's given he's getting great pressure on the quarterback in the passing situations and runs the line so well from his right defensive end position. Transfer from Temple University. Eight tackles last week in Austin, two quarterback pressures and a pass deflection. Gets away from Wingo. And the dive gets him inside the Raider 45-yard line. He's covered there by Saul. Clock rolling at 313 in the half. Arkansas will have third and a long two. On a critical drive. Down 17 as we near halftime. If they lose today, their Cotton Bowl hopes die. And incomplete, intended for Dickerson. Now, if Jack Crow will go for it on his own 20, as he did against Texas, why wouldn't he go for it on the Raider 44? Well, a little bit different situation. Fourth and 
over two yards to well just a little bit under two yards we'll say two to be exact but a little bit different situation but again he's going to go for it this is a surprise to me with 249 left on the clock this isn't a fourth down and a foot it's a lot more yardage to make brings it in and will have the first down yardage. I believe Doyle Jackson waving uh, the arms at the 42. That's what he needed and Crow measuring the spot inch for inch. I thought this was a broken play Dave to start when Hill took the ball something looked odd about it whether the fullback didn't come that way or something but he made a great adjustment to get that pitch off. And by inches, first down. Watch Jack Crow as he watches this fourth down. He's saying, get up. You see, he went out of bounds. He really fell out of bounds, and Crow is going to warm up and mark the spot. Right there is his spot. Well, his boss, Frank Royal, says that, that fourth down on his own 20 against Texas, the gutsiest call he has ever seen in football. This one works to Bradley. Wrapped up by Carr. Clock rolling at 2.36 in the half. You know, one of the things is I've been watching Hill snap that football. When he takes the snap, he has an odd leg movement. He, he kind of moves his knees together just prior to the snap. That may give away the snap count. Well, we'll see if we pick it up here. Watch his knees if we can see him. for Hill and another nice catch by his tight end Botkin. He had Matt Wingo hanging all over him and again right in front of Crow. That stops the clock at 2.05. And Dave, now that time he didn't do it because it's a quick count. But he's gaining a lot more confidence finding Botkin out in the flat, completing a couple passes, a good drive. As you said, that's what Jack Crow wanted. Use the clock, perhaps get a, at least get a field goal try, even a, a touchdown going in on a positive note. somehow spotted a hole where it looked like there was none and he is at the 27 as the clock rolls inside two minutes now watch Wade Hill's knees when he waits for the snap watch watch his right leg watch just watch the way he's, his knees snap together just before the snap count now if I'm a defensive lineman and I'm sitting there and I can see that if I know it's the next snap, I can get off just like the offensive lineman the same count Arkansas coaches have got to point that out to him. Well, they don't have they have coaches up in the stands here, but they really don't have the advantage of having a camera to see that. But that's a dead giveaway. I remember playing in a game one time where the quarterback had a little tendency to kind of lift up his foot just before the snap count, trying to get his foot out. And boy, we were flying off the ball. And everybody said it was the greatest jump we ever got. Everybody said, boy, were you getting off on the ball? Those are giveaways. Those are little things that you look for in a game. I, mean, I remember another story you told about an offensive lineman whose fingers you can read every time. And when you're a defensive lineman, you look down at everything. And this offensive lineman, to remind him himself of the snot count, would put down the number of fingers. If it was on two, he'd put two fingers down in his, in his stance. If it was on three, he'd put three. Now, I didn't tell him about it until after the game, but boy, <laughs> it sure was a fun game for me. Oh, no kidding. <laughs> after the game. Well, you love going into the into the pictures uh, the next day when your when your team is watching the films because everybody says, "Man, that row was getting off on the ball great," like he knew the snap count. Arkansas with one timeout remaining as Bradley is belted hard. Brad Phelps. Back up defensive end from Haltom City, one of five returning starters until he was beaten out by Sean Jackson in midseason. 6'2, 240 pounder. And it'll be third and a long five for Arkansas. And now's the situation where you have to throw the football. You're, you're a little bit too far to run the ball in with these five and six yard runs. You've got to throw the football down 12 to 15 yards downfield. Good protection for him. Caldwell has a first and goal grab at the eight-yard line. Hill 
Maybe not the second coming of uh, Troy Aikman, but on target enough here. Well, a lot of confidence sitting back in that pocket. He did a good job. Caldwell's going to run right on the line. Now he's going to break inside. Breaks in front of the coverage and makes an excellent catch. Good concentration on the football. And here's Hill. Stays back in the pocket. He's pretty solid back there. I tell you what, I don't know that if Allen were playing, they would have much better than four of seven through the year. 44 yards for him. Freddie Bradley breaks the tackle and hits the two-yard line with 39 seconds. And again, Arkansas has one more timeout. Saul and Brooks prevented the touchdown. It'll be second and goal from the two. Clock continues to roll. Arkansas with Huddle. <laughs> I can't believe this. You got to call timeout. Why take that that uh, timeout into the locker room? They finally call it. That cost them at least 10 seconds. They stopped the clock with 19 seconds. Well, that changes it from four plays in this position, second, third, fourth down. It changes it to two plays. Now you have to go to the end zone. If you run a play and you, if, if it's a wide play and you don't make it in the end zone, you're going to be hard pressed to get back on the line, snap the ball before time runs out. Well, again, we check around the conference and at SMU, Dan Freiberger, who was the second team quarterback and replaced Mike Romo when he went out for the year, maybe for his career with knee surgery. Freiberger becomes the sixth starter out with a knee injury at SMU. What a way to celebrate their 75th year of football. Roman Anderson will uh, probably become the first college football player ever to score 400 career points. And David Klingler needs only one touchdown pass to set the new Southwest Conference career record of 76. At A&M, Greg Hill Thursday night broke Earl Campbell's conference freshman rushing record and also Broke the 1,000-yard barrier. Speaking of TCU, five offensive starters banged up in one of the most bruising football games I think I've ever seen in that Aggie game. More guys carried off and limping off than you won't see in, in months of football normally. Second and goal. Hill to the end zone. The fade pattern in and out of Dickerson's hands. It will be third down, 15 seconds. He had to get that one over Donnie Brooks. Well, let me tell you, everybody's thinking run on this play, but Donnie Brooks has got outside coverage, and he's not fooled. He gets great inside position on Dickerson. Now, really, Dickerson had a chance at this football, just wasn't able to bring it in. He was looking over the right shoulder and went over the left. Try it again. This time, it works. Quarterback said, hey, if I can throw just a little bit better and you'll look over just the right shoulder, we'll complete this pass, and they did. Ron Dickerson with his third touchdown grab of the season. And Wade Hill couldn't have been much steadier in engineering that scoring drive, which ends with 11 seconds and a half. Todd Wright's kick is good. Jack Crow really does some unusual things. I mean, the, the going for fourth down we talked about coming back to the very same play. Not many coaches would try that. This time, perfect. Well, it was a better thrown football that time, and the combination, the coordination between Dickerson and Hill was much better. He didn't have to look around and com turn completely around. He looked under over one shoulder and brought the ball in. He just said, I like the matchup, Dickerson against Brooks. One more time for Hill. It's got to work, and it did. And what a different complexion that makes for the second half. Well, you have to go. When you're down 24 to 7, you've got to have something happen well. And they did that time. They drove the football a long way. They did exactly what Jack Crow wanted to do. Use, use up all that clock. Don't give Texas Tech another chance. They're going to kick the football off. They got seven points, and they're going to kick this football off with 11 seconds left. Well, they will as soon as they can get it steady on the tee. Lance Ellison will tie, try it again and may have to get somebody to hold it. If anything, this breeze has picked up as the afternoon has gone on. Swift kick to the 
48 yard line. And Brian Dubisky will set Texas Tech up at their 31 with five seconds to go in the first half. A 16 play, 80 yard scoring drive that took five minutes and 41 seconds. And Wade Hill gets more mature with every snap. Don't be surprised if Robert Hall throws this ball 60 yards. He's got the arm to do it. This may not be just a give up. Well, it is. <laughs> but, uh, but it would have been a, it would have been a good play. I can see that going down the, down the sidelines. It sounded so good. <laughs> well, I'd like to see it. <laughs> that is the end of the first half. Texas Tech playing the score the role well so far today. Conference football on Raycom is being brought to you by Southwest Airlines, by Norwegian Cruise Line, by Exxon, by Mexico Tourism, and remember, drive safely. Don't wreck your life. says she waits by the truck because she can't stand to see me get hurt. And that makes two of us. Here's to rodeo cowboys, the women who love them, and cowboy cut jeans. Wrangler. How to improve your home involves some difficult decisions. You know, we could use a bigger kitchen. Nuh-uh. A new bath. Uh-uh. Kitchen. A new bath. We could use a... At NCNB, we don't think financing should be one of them. Okay, a bath. Upstairs. Upstairs? That's why we've set up a loan information line. Call with your questions or stop by and see a loan specialist. Then tell us what's on your mind. Okay, I got it. A garage. Uh-uh. A deck. A garage. 1-800-ASK-NCNB. Sweetheart. The loan source. Yes? I want a deck. Turn on Raycom and turn on excitement. For the best in sports, turn on Raycom. For over 25 years, the National Association of Collegiate Directors of Athletics has brought the team concept to athletic administration. Over 3,000 dedicated professionals helping each other to balance budgets, raise funds, manage current issues, and more. Plus, the NACTA Foundation provides drug education, as well as scholarship grants and internships for student athletes. Academic responsibility, athletic excellence, that's the National Association of Collegiate Directors of Athletics. The University of Arkansas salutes faculty member E. Faye Jones, the 1990 American Institute of Architects gold medal winner. The President of the United States and the Prince of Wales took part in the ceremonies honoring the famous architect. The University of Arkansas is especially proud of Mr. Jones because he's dedicated his life to teaching. E. Faye Jones, sharing his gift of soaring simplicity and upward reach with everyone. The University of Arkansas. A beautiful afternoon here in Lubbock, Texas, with Texas Tech enjoying a 24-14 lead over Arkansas. Now let's go down to the field and watch the going band from Raiderland and their tribute to those who served in Desert Storm.
after these messages. Time show right after these messages. Your Dallas Fort Worth Mitsubishi Motors dealers are giving you something to really chill about. Big savings. Max Rita dealer incentives can help you save big on Galat. Motor Trends top 10 import buy in a sports sedan two years in a row. Galat is a great buy and a great value priced at only $11,439. Get big savings on a great buy and give yourself something to care about. Come in for a great deal at your Dallas Fort Worth Mitsubishi Motors dealer. Taco Bueno! What's totally new and delicious? You know, Muchaco! What's kind of like a taco and a sandwich? You know, Muchaco! Taco Bueno! Seasoned ground beef and a whole lot more on our special Bueno bread. You know, Muchaco! And where do you get it? You know. We put a lot of I really couldn't find anything that really worked or looked natural until I seen a, a commercial on Hair Club for Men. And I thought, well, why don't I send away for the brochure? Our booklet contains a comprehensive discussion about hair loss, Hair Club's non-surgical strand-by-strand method, and our latest innovation, the Polyfuse method, which literally fuses top-quality human hair to your own hair. When I went to the hair club and I got my system, it really gave me more ways to be able to do my hair and I could do it in more of a 90s fashion and that made me feel a lot more comfortable when you're in clubs and you know wanting to ask people to dance and you don't want to look like you're 40 when you're 24 23 years old once I had the process done now I can be spontaneous um, I can swim when I want to and not worry about my hair tell dry my hair get out catch some rays and the wind doesn't affect me anymore I don't mind the wind at all and by the way I'm not only the hair club president but I'm also a client Back at halftime, Red Raiders 24 to 14 over Arkansas. Who better to have as your uh, head track coach, the women's coach here, is Louise Ritter as a gold medal winner at Seoul in 1988 in the uh, women's high jump 6-8. You were telling me that's equal to your career best, but you had one shot to do it, and it worked for the gold medal. Yes, we jumped on a jump off, so we were completely equal through the entire competition, and then we had a jump off. She jumped first and missed, and I had a second, well, actually a fourth attempt and cleared, and that was the end of the competition. And then private business for a while for you, and, and at what point did you consider coaching as a possibility? Well, you know, I uh, jumped in the 89 season after the Seoul Games and had a great season and then had a real bad ankle injury, and I had thought at one point I wanted to jump into 92 because my coach had been selected as Olympic team coach for the 92 team. Injuries prevented that, and then I decided that I didn't really want to get out of the sport, and the next logical step would be to get into coaching. That coach you're talking about, Burt Lyle, really a legend at, at TWU. Do you try to incorporate a lot of what he taught you as the head coach here? Well, I use a lot of what he taught. He was real big on mental toughness, and I think that's a lot of, a lot of what the Tech women's team has been lacking is mental toughness. And so we work a lot of the things that he did with me, a lot of the same drills, and that's what we're concentrating on and getting strong mentally. Football and basketball coaches always talk about a blank year plan, three-year plan, five-year plan. Do you have one? Um, this year is going to be pretty slow for us because we're building, we're recruiting. You know, I'm starting to get my own kids, taking the job so late. So my expectations of the team is not really great as a team this year. I'd like to see some individual things happen. But uh, in the future, I think we'll compete with the Southwest Conference and be, be well known, I hope, as a strong women's team. We wish you a lot of luck, and thanks for the visit. Thank you very much. I appreciate being here today. Louise Ritter, head women's track coach here at Texas Tech. The Red Raiders 24-14 halftime scored. We'll have more from Lubbock in a moment. About 50 years ago, folks out here needed help with insurance. 
And since Farm Bureau's whole purpose was to help, they organized insurance companies. Now, from the outset, these companies were committed to being conservative. And the result has been a tradition of strength and stability respected across the country. Now, through the years, Farm Bureau has grown and added lots of innovative services, but that stability never changed. And stability is why you can trust Farm Bureau today. as precise works of art, moving sculptures that come to life with stunning grace. We believe every engine deserves an enduring, powerful life. We believe every engine deserves a motor oil that offers uncompromising protection for a flawless performance. Exxon Superflow Motor Oil. For uncompromising protection against engine wear. The Exxon Southwest Conference Player of the Week is Butch Hadnot of Texas. The sophomore running back gained a career-high 166 yards against Texas Tech and had touchdown runs of 34 and 26 yards. Hadnot had rushed for just 200 yards in Texas' first six games combined prior to the Red Raiders. For being Player of the Week, Exxon will donate $1,000 in Butch Hadnot's name to the Southwest Conference Scholarship Fund. Great players and great teams are constant in the 77-year history of the Southwest Conference. Last year, over 2 million fans saw an offensive explosion as Southwest Conference teams set 22 national records. This season, a wide range of scoring styles continue to generate viewing excitement. And again, the conference boasts exceptional candidates for college football's highest honors. Call the Southwest Conference ticket hotline now. 1-800-800-SWCA. Sure, I want to enjoy myself with my teammates and friends on and off the field. But why should I let someone talk me into using drugs? Be your own person. Make your own decisions. If you or someone you know needs help or information concerning drug abuse, call this toll-free number, 1-800-662-HELP. This message provided by the NCAA. 24-14, Tech at halftime, and time now for the Southwest Conference Football Trivia Tester, brought to you by Southwest Airlines. Name the player who holds the record for the longest rushing touchdown in Arkansas history, and send your answer to Southwest Airlines Trivia Tester, 1300 West Mockingbird Lane, Suite 501, Dallas, Texas, 75247. You'll be eligible to win two round-trip tickets anywhere in the states of Texas and Arkansas, courtesy of Southwest Airlines, celebrating 20 years of loving you. And you'll also receive two tickets to an upcoming conference game. Answers have to be received by Thursday. You must be 18 or older to win. Here's the answer to last week's Southwest Airlines trivia tester. Forrest Gregg had the longest NFL career of the conference's athletic directors. And our congratulations go out to Jack Lewis of Fort Worth, who is this week's winner. Tech led three to nothing. And uh, the big play early in this game, definitely the block punt by Steve Carr, which led to Rodney Blackshear's touchdown yep. grab. It certainly did. And when Hall came out, he found Blackshear just a perfect pass. Great pattern to make separation from the cornerback. Excellent. 10-0 Raiders at that point. Freddie Bradley with his first touchdown as an Arkansas Razorback. Fourth down and goal from the two, and he pushes it in. And Dave, that was just power football. That's what Arkansas does so well. They just blew it in there. Great tiptoe job by Anthony Lynn. Down the sideline, he got hit here by Collins, and he did not go down. Regathered his balance and just dove in for the score. 12-yarder, and then time enough in the first half for Wade Hill to lead a long drive, and it culminates in this grab by Ron Dickerson. The second time in a row they had gone to this pattern, and Hill was right on the money. So 24-14, Tech here. Let's look at the Budweiser Top 10 report. 
And number one, Florida State rolling toward that meeting with Miami. Number two, Washington later against Southern Cal. Miami later on at home against West Virginia. Northwestern, no trouble for Michigan today. Tennessee and Notre Dame, a lot of people thought that would be closer, but Notre Dame leads in the second period, 24-7. Georgia and Florida, that game will be on later. California, great story this year. They're seventh rated. They're at Oregon State later, and number eight, Alabama later at LSU. Penn State, Maryland, always a clash. Maryland does not have a very good record in that series, and Penn State leads at 24 to nothing. Indiana, Iowa will be later. We'll return after this message from Southwest Airlines. Because most of our flights are short, this is what our meals look like on Southwest Airlines. It's also what our fares look like. Southwest Airlines. Southwest Airlines has one of the best on-time records in the country. Mr. Smith, you're early. Just something to remember. Southwest Airlines. The network of college football's preseason classics. A full season of high-octane Southwest Conference action. Two of the top postseason bowl games. And all winter long, college basketball. For the best in sports, turn on Raycom. Felix Popo. Upon graduation from Escoffier, some of these culinary masters go to London or Rome. Andre Ligo. Others go to sea and work their magic on Norwegian Cruise Line. No cruise line caters to food the way we do. Norwegian Cruise Line. The best vacation you've ever had. To say nothing of the chocolate cake, a la Andre Ligo. I've always been interested in science, biology, chemistry, physics. They were all fascinating. In college, I discovered ways to apply the pure sciences to medicine, exploring new ways to help the body repair itself. The Texas Tech Health Sciences Center has introduced me to a whole new world of opportunity. You know, after a couple of weeks, everybody's going to have the same, everybody's going to have a test. They always, test dates usually fall in the same area. So after your first three weeks or, you know, every three weeks or every four weeks, you know, you're going to have two or three tests at the same time. So you just you take, you know, a certain point of the day out for everyone, even if you, when you're traveling, like when we travel Friday for games, I take some of my books with me. Arkansas nose guard Owen Kelly not only succeeds in the classroom, he excels, and he hopes to continue his education in medical school. Ever since I was a little kid, I've wanted to, wanted to be a doctor. You know, your mom kind of drills it, you know, be a doctor, be a lawyer or something. When you, so I just decided, to, you know, I was in high school and I enjoyed science and math, so I decided to get into, to get into being a doctor, going to medicine. 24-14 Tech at halftime. We'll check the halftime statistics. And Arkansas did finally get a semblance of the passing game, especially on that scoring drive. They have a 125-yard first-half rushing attack, very respectable. And the total yardage a lot closer than it looked like it might be in the first quarter. A lot of balance there by Tech. Of course, Arkansas relying a lot more on their rushing game with the inexperienced quarterback. And nice to see a near penalty free game. We will be ready for the start of the second half when we return. They're right. New diet Dr. Pepper does taste more like regular Dr. Pepper. So let's have another. New diet Dr. Pepper. There's no stopping the taste. It's happening. Some people are climbing out of their imports and getting into the 1992 Buick Regal sedan. Why? One simple, overwhelming consideration. Quality. Buick quality. It's something you might want to get into yourself. 
Regal from Buick. The new symbol for quality in America and beyond. If your face were square, shaving would be simple. If your face were flat, any razor would do. But your face has curves. You need the revolutionary Schick Tracer, the first razor with a blade that flexes to trace every curve on your face. Compared to other razors, Tracer puts more of the blade edge against your skin. For real faces, just like yours. Tracer from Schick traces every curve on your face. Hello? This is Thelma downstairs. What was that? Diet Dr. Pepper. It tastes more like regular Dr. Pepper. Can I try one? I'll send George right down. Southwest Conference football on Raycom is being brought to you by Southwest Airlines. By Texas Farm Bureau. By Buick. By Schick Tracer. And by Budweiser. Back at Jones Stadium, where we begin the third quarter with the Red Raiders preparing to kick into the wind to the Razorbacks, who narrowed the gap from 17 to 10 just before the half, and the gap mentally even narrower. That was a, just a huge boost for them. It certainly was. Again, we're talking about an inexperienced quarterback who really gained composure and experience on that, just that one drive. It's a good kick down to the 90-yard line where Lee Keith will return. And a return of nine. Arkansas goes from its 18-yard line. And Wade Hill, very respectable in his first start. The walk on in the first half, five of nine for 45 yards and a touchdown. And the Arkansas first half drive chart. They bring that over there. The killer early that block punt, but they recovered pretty nicely. 11 and 16 play touchdown drives. And to go that long without a mistake from this unseasoned a quarterback. Jack Crow's got to be absolutely delighted. Crow and Price, the fullback, looks for the room that really doesn't open up and might have picked up a yard and a half or so. Well, the Arkansas must that we told you about at the outset, BBF. Well, Hill has gained confidence, especially on that last one. They have kept it simple and short, but avoid a high-scoring game. 24 points in the first half is not what Jack Crow wanted. E.D. Jackson on the cutback has room across the 35-yard line. And the Arkansas first down as Donnie Brooks finally brings down Jackson. 17-yard gain. Extremely dangerous. E.D. Jackson. Watch the nice cut he makes, Dave. He picks a good block outside now. Right here, steps over and cuts back across the field and picks up the yardage. That's what got him the extra eight or nine yards on this 17-yard run. An excellent cut. Jackson gets a breather and he's replaced by Freddie Bradley, who takes the option pitch. Raiders were ready this time. Anthony Wiley slowed him up, and then Wingo came over to finish him off. Wiley, a sophomore from Richardson, who got his first career interception last week at Texas. And again, second and nine for Arkansas. Well, as important as that late first half drive was, same holds true for this early second half drive. They can come within three after trailing by 17. But Bradley runs right into his own blocks and a loss back to the 34. People sometimes overlook the emphasis on this initial drive. Now, if your defense, you've made your adjustments, you come out. If you're not able to stop them, your defense just kind of sinks. If the offense and you come out there and you make the adjustments, you come out, drive the length of the field and score, it just boosts you up to the heights that a coach wants. Three wideouts left. Dickerson inside of Caldwell, inside of Keith. And the Raider blitz beaten. Dickerson breaks Wiley's tackle and then knocked out of bounds, and he will not have the first down. 
Out at the 45, shy by two yards, thanks to Dubisky. Well, I watched Hill that time, and boy, did he get smacked. One of the things that Jack Crow said is, I like about this kid is that he doesn't flinch. When he knows he has that pressure coming right down his throat, he doesn't flinch in there and kind of hesitate shy away. He takes a smack, and he did that time. Not enough for the first down, but a good play. So Pete Rather will kick to Tracy Saul. That 71-yarder also with the win. And this one has the same result that it goes 55 for the touchback. Rather putting up some Mark Bounds numbers here in London. where luxury and affordability collide in a most comfortable way. A place to embrace it all this winter. All legendary pleasures of Puerto Vallarta. Puerto Vallarta embraced the Mexican fable. special day we pause to remember all the brave ones who had to leave a peaceful home behind to stand up for what is right in the world Every day and always, we're proud of you. we'll see the Red Raider offense from their own 20 after holding Arkansas on their first third quarter possession the long setback on first down. They'll take it on the drop play, and Henry Ford had a better idea. <laughs> Did Henry Ford crash down there? He was on a slant inside, and he just crushed it. This is, of course, the drive chart of Texas Tech in that first half. Both teams ripping off some very extensive drive. 9, 10, 12, 16 plays. Loss of four on first down, second and 14. Now Hall with all day to throw, but it's dropped by McDowell. So third and 14. The grades for the Tech must. Well, CAA. <laughs> Pressure and inexperienced quarterback. They really haven't put a lot of pressure on them. They did take advantage of the opportunities with that block punt when they scored and that fumble recovery. And the hall pass required, he's done a fine job in the first half. Arkansas goes again to the nickelback, Barry Kennedy, and they pull the strong sideline back at Chapman. Cooper in motion, McDowell is the lone setback. And Hall hangs it up for Anthony So close. Anthony Stinnett getting some attention from scouts. The New York Giants especially like him. Well, he had to go so high for this football that he had to forget about his feet. Couldn't get that foot back down in bounds. Right on the line. Look at the official in perfect position to make the call. For the first time today, we see the nation's leading punter, Mark Bounds. 48.4 yard average. Into the wind, a low liner. He is an expert at punting into the wind, which he's done more than half the time this year. And that is down at the 43. This one goes 40. He works as hard as any lineman or back during the nine off-season months, but what does he do during the season? Eat a lot of cherry pie, a lot of cheesecake, uh, kick back, watch the Simpsons, you know, different world, that type of thing. A lot, a lot of couch routines and uh, just hang out, basically, be myself. I sit back, relax, enjoy what I've worked for in the off season. I got a plan figured out. It works. He lives in a different world. <laughs> First down carry by E.D. Jackson. Might squeeze out a half yard or so. Steve Carr chased him to the sideline. 
Well, <laughs> I'll tell you one thing. In my conversations with him, they always say kickers are strange, and uh, he certainly had some interesting things about him, but his attire was unbelievable. I, he doesn't shop in Lubbock, I can tell you that. <laughs> well, I, I think the key with Bounce is he, he has some natural eccentricities, but to his credit, he, he really works to, to really uh, develop those as much as possible. Second and nine, Jackson off right tackle in Raider territory. And a couple of yards shy to bring up third down. And we met his father before the game, and you would never <laughs> place these two in the same family. What a contrast. His father was up here in the booth and just told how proud he was of his son. Now you talk about attire. You want to see what this is what he wore yesterday to practice. These are self-designed outfits. Two watches. He could tell time in, in Europe. That's what he's telling me. Yes, to know what's going on in the other world. Besides the one he lives in, we have had it. Looping intended for Dickerson. And Donnie Brooks had him blanketed on the sideline. Boy, great recovery that time by Brooks. That's the alley-oop pass. It's, it's kind of thrown high so that the defensive back doesn't have the chance to look back on it. Bonds just turned back to the last second just to flip it away. the last time Penn State lost to Maryland I think they've lost one time in 35 years fourth and two and Rather with a flag down well he doesn't mess with going for the angle or for the sideline he just booms it as high and as far as he can and this one goes 49 yards if the punt stands Doyle Jackson the referee Says against Arkansas. Dyke says we'll take it on our 20. All right, you got Spike Dykes, the native of Lubbock, born across the street from Jones Stadium. What does he make of his punter? Oh, Mark Bounds is a mess, I'm telling you, Dave. He uh, he is really a joy. He Mark is uh, he dances to a little different drummer, but you know the thing about Mark Bounds is Mark will do anything that you'd ask him for this football team, whatever it is. Uh, very unselfish, and he really is a team-oriented person. And as long as he can kick it like he can kick it, well, you know, you put up a lot of things. But Mark is a lot of fun. And the bottom line is he gets it done. For 50 or more kicks, he's online to set the all-time NCAA record. Orson Sheffield. In the offset eyes, Blackshear goes in motion, and Hall still have it after a nice play action kick. And it is Sheffield to the 35 and a first down. Mick Thomas made the tackle as we pause briefly for station identification on the Raycom network. This is Channel 8, WFAA TV, Dallas, Fort Worth. Ten minutes to go third quarter in Lubbock. It is 24-14 Texas Tech. Dave Barnett and Dave Rowe. From Jones Stadium, first and ten. And Sheffield has his number called again for a couple. Glad to have those of you joining us on Prime Network and its nationwide family of regional sports cable networks. That is no, oh, that's boy. no misprint. That is 17-0 Kansas over Nebraska in the second. Kansas and Kansas State no longer the doormats that they've automatically been in football. If that holds up, that'll be, to me, the shock of the year. Kansas State scared the daylights out of Nebraska before the Huskers finally pulled that one out. Here comes Ford, down goes Hall. Big loss back to the 28. Ford leads Arkansas with six sacks on the year. Well, it's a long way to come around for Ford. He comes all the way around the offensive tackle. This play just takes too long to develop. Biggers misses his block. There's Ford. And really, the, the real reason, watch the coverage on Rodney Blackshear. Man-to-man -man coverage, he's just running straight with him, and Hall cannot find him. And that's a linebacker staying with him man-to-man. -man. Tyrone Chapman doing what few linebackers would even contemplate. 
intended for Blackshear. And that will make for fourth and 16. Virginia blowing away the Wolfpack. And East Carolina and Southern Miss, two of the unheralded programs in the uh, NCAA in the second quarter. Downs has had 43 kicks this year. 27 of those have been into the win. He averages over 48. This much more typical of his year. James from his 25. Michael James. Two men to beat, including Bounds. And Michael James is going to take this one all the way. 75 yards. Dave, whenever you look at a return like this and you talk about a punter that punts that far, the first thing you would assume is that he outpunts his coverage. But he had great hang time on the football. Arkansas just set up a wall of blockers on their sideline. He got outside of it and right down the sideline for the score. James, who has been among the best punt returners in college football this year, he just shows why as right as the extra point he had a 56 yarder earlier this year that didn't go for a touchdown this one does Saul and James two of the top three along with Kevin Smith in the conference this year well now watch how much yardage he has to give to get outside a couple players bang into each other now he's out beyond this wall of blockers all you're going to see is white shirts here and he just gets an escort he comes around bounds there bounds trying to keep him in inside but no one's going to stop him 24 21 tech and we're back after this from southwest airlines time to rise and shine fun seekers southwest airlines fun fairs are back well you waited so long for a fair to get so nice and low really now. now you really should fly Light up the night. Southwest Airlines' new fun fairs are so low. Want to see that again? Now you can fly just for the fun of it. What if, instead of finding people who throw trash on our Texas highways, we sent them to have a little conversation with Mike Williams? Just what if, every time a piece of trash blew out the back of a pickup truck, Mike was standing there to hand out the fine? It's just a thought. Once again, Buick is raising the banner for quality in America. Introducing the 1992 Le Sabre with a higher level of power, safety, security, and convenience. This new Sabre is going to be one tough act to follow. Le Sabre for 1992 from Buick. Michael James takes this at his 25-yard line, and after he brings it in, watch number 20, Kerry Kennedy against... Number 13 uh, for Tech, Damon Wickwear. Close enough for clipping, the referee said no. What'd you think? <laughs> That's awfully close. The referee's a lot closer on the field, but from that angle, it did look like a clip. Looked like he made a push to him in the back. And Ellison sails the ensuing kick way deep. The last time an Arkansas player returned to punt for a touchdown. December 27, 1980, Gary Anderson against Tulane in the Hall of Fame Bowl. Burt McCarley digs that one up. And has this game turned around? Oh, 24 boy. to 7 Tech. It looked like they'd named their score. That, that shows you how important that score was just before halftime. 
Arkansas win keeps them on track for the Cotton Bowl. They control their own destiny. If they win the rest, they'll be in Dallas New Year's Day. This is Stinnett on the slant. First down to the 35. Anthony Stinnett, the senior from Monday. Fastest, strongest. Red Raider wideout. And with the type of defense that Arkansas plays, they play a controlled zone where they drop, try to let you catch it in front of them, in front of them, and come up and bang you, drop the ball loose. With that type of defense, that crossing pattern coming into the middle is open an awful lot. Dan Morris to the 39. Darwin Ireland, the weak side linebacker, stood him up with the initial hit. At the conclusion of today's game, Dave and I announced the Southwest Airlines player of the game. And we have an often based player of the game on special team play. We could today. Michael James with a lightning bolt. 75-yard punt return to make it a three-point Arkansas deficit. Second down. McDowell to the Arkansas 40. You know, when times get tough, Spike Dykes told me that Robert Hall is a no-nonsense guy. He plays every down full speed. And what he does is he reads the defense very quickly and finds McDowell in the scene. This was an awfully quick pass. As he was dropping back off the line, he only took about two steps, and bam, he hit him with the football. 20 yards before the tackle by Banks. First and 10. Hog 41. Morris. They're going to cut back. To the 32, he'll be close for another first down. Henry Ford chased him down. Hey, this is another one of those plays where you seem to feel that Texas Tech is getting into that rhythm. They run now the sprint draw, and he makes a nice cut back against the grain and gets in that open field, and he just rambles through here. Last runner we saw do uh, things like that, James Gray, who left his program a couple of years ago, but he's a lot bigger and stronger than Gray was. On the keeper. Ball headed for that first down marker, and I don't think got there, which would bring up third and short. Maybe we don't have any word uh, to confirm this from the tech sideline, but there may be another leg problem with Rodney Blackshear. We haven't seen him at all in this series. And we're basing that on the fact that he had the uh, fractured fibula earlier in the year and got kicked on it last week. Morris. Look at him. Lower shoulder and drive ahead. First down near the 25. He is a low. Oh, he is. Kirk Collins came up and gave him a great stick. And for a safety who's given away about 45 pounds, it was a good hit. But but Morris just just kind of powers over top of him. Watch Collins come up in here, 29. Bam. <laughs> I mean, wow. That's what you want in a fullback, that tough guy that'll get you that three or four yards when you need him. Blackshear now does check into the game, and he is wide right. Ball to McDowell, ball loose. And Tech manages the recovery at the 34. Boy, for a long period, it looked like it was right out there for the Hogs, but Stance Labai, the right guard, finally jumped him. I thought Phillips was going to get this ball. Mackenzie Phillips, 70. It was laying right in front of him. There, watch here. The ball will come out right there, and it's in the clear. There's Phillips, 70, going for the football. He just kind of gets knocked off. Now look at the corner coming in. He gets knocked off, too. Ray Lee Johnson with the hit that caused the fumble. And it's second and 18. Lloyd Hill. Oh, Lloyd Hill may have made the best catch of his day. He reached down. The ball fell down on the back of his leg. Again, the crossing patterns with this type of a defense, you're looking at a two-deep zone. You've got them all across the line and two deep, and he just comes on a crossing pattern. There he is right on about the 30, well, about the 25-yard line, but he reached back behind him to catch that football. Let's see if we can see it from this angle. He bobbles it there. Now look at this, back wow. on his leg. Oh, man. <laughs> the 
Arkansas player we showed you shake it up was Henry Ford. He's still in there, and Tech burns a timeout. We'll take it with him with 4.37 to play in the third quarter and a three-point game. So we're enjoying our favorite spot, and we see this old guy. Hey, Fox! Then there was this huge wave. We thought the old guy was history. That was hot. Anyway, we were impressed. Guru dude, want a cold bud? Groovy. 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 Despite our language differences, all surfers share a universal communication. Oops. Whoa. If your face were square, shaving would be simple. If your face were flat, any razor would do. But your face has curves. You need the revolutionary Schick Tracer, the first razor with a blade that flexes to trace every curve on your face. Compared to other razors, Tracer puts more of the blade edge against your skin. For real faces, just like yours. Tracer from Schick traces every curve on your face. Buying a new car involves some difficult decisions. Okay, let's see. Four-door? And uh, not two-door. Hey, maybe no doors. At NCNB, we don't think financing should be one of them. Well, you gotta be kidding. That's why we've set up a loan information line. Call with your questions or stop by and see a loan specialist. Way too fast. Then move on to the really difficult decisions. Okay, red. No, blue. Maybe white. 1-800-ASK-NCNB. Two-tone? The loan source. Texas Tech has had time to discuss a third and seven on the Arkansas 24. Robert Hall has been uh, just dead on target most of the day. 15 to 23 for 170 yards. And the touchdown, the Raiders still with four wideouts. And Moore stays in motion. And Hall on the quarterback keeper. First and goal at the five. Now, there's no disguise on that play. That is the quarterback draw all the way. What the quarterback does is take the ball back. He allows his offensive linemen to get their blocks, to start turning the defensive linemen. Once he, they've got them turned, you see a little switch in the middle. Now he just runs to daylight, picks up his center there, Elam, and he just picks up the first down and with it. First and goal carry by Morris will get four of the five they need. And what a strong response by Texas Tech after that 17-point lead had been cut to three on the James Hunt return. Boy, and it all starts with Robert Hall. As I said, Spike Dyke says there's no fooling around with him. When he comes out to football on Fridays, that's usually kind of a fun day. All Everybody comes out and just kind of goofs around, just gets loose. But they say Robert Hall doesn't. Every day he tries to get better. He'll keep won't get in. Nick Thomas saw to that. So bring up third and goal from the Arkansas one. We talked about Hill as a walk-on. Hall was a walk-on, and not because he didn't have offers. Hill had an offer to go to TCU, which vanished when Tim Shea took that scholarship, and he decided to walk on at his home state school of Arkansas. Hall could have done a lot of places. He wanted to go to Tech, and he paid his own way the first year, and of course now on scholarship. Byron Morris. No signal, did not get in. It will be fourth and goal. Well, this is just a great close by Arkansas on the play. This is just power football right up the middle. And Arkansas responded so well up front. They, there was a hole initially there. You see Thomas in there, but they just closed it, squeezed it down. Thomas and Ireland. And Dykes. Ready to go for it on fourth down. Lynn in the game with McDowell and Sheffield. Ball on the option here. I 
thought that was a broken play again. The way Hall faked to his left and then turned around, it almost looked as if he was looking for someone to give the football to, can made a complete circle and walked in the end zone. If it was planned, he sure faked me out too. You don't think of, Dave, when you're down on the goal line, you don't think of delay plays. In other words, like a, a counter action where the back goes one way to fake them and come back. You think of power football. That certainly was not. Well, they tried power football, and it got them nowhere. Lynn Elliott remains perfect on PATs this year. Two angles here. Robert Hall's touchdown on fourth and goal. Well, you see the way he turned to the left? Now he just walks in. You couldn't see it from that angle, but when he turns to his left, it almost looked as if he was giving the football. Let's see if we can look at it again. See, he looks back to the left there. Now he does pick up the guard. Now that would indicate that that was a call play, but what a call. What a fake on the line. Here it is. See the turn left and the little hitch step. Pick up your guard and just waltz in. If two angles are good, three got to be better. <laughs> 31-21, Tech with 2.36 to go in the third quarter. And we've done some games this year that have featured emotional swings back and forth, and, and this may have featured more swings than any. Oh, boy. Well, it, when they came back, and they were down 24-7, and Arkansas came back and scored just before half, that was a huge lift. Then when, they, then when they get that great punt return, now they're right back in the football game. Then Arkansas just takes control with that long drive, so they want to take the emotion back to their side. Freddie Bradley on the return to the 23. Arkansas first and 10, back down by 10. And as long as they can stay somewhere in that margin in the fourth quarter and have uh, the time to do what they do best, which is go on the ground. This should remain a real competitive game. Another long scoring drive, 13 plays, 80 yards. At five minutes and 38 seconds. Bill back to work with Bradley and Kirby in the eye, and it is the fullback, Chris Kirby, who earned a scholarship this past uh, spring. Started the last two games of 1990. Next week, we'll be right back in Austin and we'll see TCU try to keep their bowl hopes alive. Texas playing at Houston today, and if they win that one, then their Cotton Bowl hopes are still alive as well. And they're really rooting for Tech because Arkansas beat Texas. And they need the elimination of Arkansas to really help their Cotton Bowl chances. Kirby again, he got across the 30. It'll be third and two and a half or three. Wind at the Hogs' backs for the final 145 of the third quarter. But we haven't really seen either coach make much of a bow to the conditions in terms of their strategy, and, and the first 17 points of the game scored into the win. Wind has been virtually no factor. Certainly is no factor on the running game that Arkansas has employed most of this game, but Texas Tech has been able to pass with or against the wind well. Bradley, first down. And a flag down, Bradley to the 39. There are two flags, both over near the far sideline, and Doyle Jackson will sort it all out. Finally over in Raleigh. Arkansas with a hold. Boy, does that change the complexion of, of a series, because you've just picked up a first down, you're going to be at at your own 40-yard line, you've got good momentum, and now all of a sudden, instead of that first down, you're going to be, it's going to compound because it's going to come back 10 yards. Now you're facing a definite pass situation with, again, that inexperienced quarterback. Kansas led Nebraska early. Nebraska has responded. But I look at, at Nebraska at number 11 and Texas A&M a point away from being undefeated at number 12. Something not right there. Somebody's overrated and the Aggies definitely underrated. This is Cordale Johnson deep 
back up on the depth chart a tailback for Jack Crow. Boy, Johnson there. with his first carry. Dave, everybody was thinking pass like I was. They run a they run a draw on it. He got great hold. He picks up 12 yards for first down. That's not only his first carry today. That's his first carry this year. And he makes the 34. As we get even later in the third quarter. Johnson again with the 37. He's 5'10", 191, a redshirt freshman from Denver. And I wonder if he expected to be thrown into a tight game. That's one thing that Arkansas has always had is a long depth list of, of great running backs. Over the years that they were so successful running the football and winning the Southwest Conference, they had great depth. Second and seven. And Kirby back in at the fullback spot. On what will be the final play of quarter number three. Looked like the Raiders might blow it wide open. They led by 17. Arkansas came back within three. It's tech by 10 as we head to the fourth. If you're looking for a way to beat those old cop blues, your Isuzu dealer's got the right Isuzu for you. It's the right time for year-end savings on selected 91 Isuzu cars and trucks, like the roomy Isuzu Rodeo 4x4, priced it up to $500 off during the Isuzu for You sale. Info stylist, pick up trooper, rodeos too. Your Isuzu dealer's got the right Isuzu for you. Save on a rodeo at your local Dallas-Fort Worth Metroplex Isuzu dealer. It's the newest health crisis in Texas, and you could be at risk. It's costly, it's confusing, and it's getting worse. The fact is, over three million Texans are already victims. But this Texas health crisis isn't a disease. It's insurance. Join News 8's HealthWise reporter Dennis Johnson for important options on an issue that affects us all. Health insurance, critical condition, Tuesday on the News 8 Update at 10. Working in the spirit of Texas. You need the goods, and America needs the job. Stand up and ask for quality made. Bring back the best today. Together we can find a way. Bring it home to the USA. I look for those little words, made in the USA. Bet I do. You don't just get a better product. You get a better country. Bring it home to the USA. Raycom is being brought to you by Southwest Airlines. By Dr. Pepper. By Schick Tracer. By Budweiser. Friends know when to say when. By NCNB. And by Buick. Fourth quarter at Jones Stadium in Lubbock. Dave Barnett and Dave Rowe. It's 31-21 Tech and third and five for the Hogs. As they turn around and go into the 20 mile an hour breeze. Hill just did get the option pitch off to Cordale Johnson. Tracy Saul prevents the first down. A yard shy. We haven't called Saul's name all that often today. But he comes up with a big hit when they needed it here. Well, I, even I wasn't thinking pass on this play. I've, I've been so sure on third down situations, but a nice pitch there by by Hill to get outside, but he just doesn't have anywhere to go. You see all the black shirts running the line? If you're a defensive coach, that's what you want. Pursuit to the football. So Rather will stand at his own 28 and kick to Saul, standing at his 21. Low snap, he handled it absolutely perfectly. And Saul at the 21. Rather out of the baseball uh, background. Father played for the Kansas City A's. His brother Rick played in the Rangers organization. And he handled that like uh, Ozzie Smith might have. If your face were square, shaving would be simple. 
If your face were flat, any razor would do. But your face has curves. You need the revolutionary Schick Tracer, the first razor with a blade that flexes to trace every curve on your face. Compared to other razors, Tracer puts more of the blade edge against your skin. For real faces, just like yours. Tracer from Schick traces every curve on your face. Looking good, you want Bud Light. The clean, fresh taste won't fill you up and never let you down. You can taste it, you can feel it, you know you've got it right. Everything else is just light. Just keep your Bud Light shining. Everything else is just light. You've got to shine on. Everything else is just light. Saturday. Southwest Conference excitement continues. The TCU Horn Frogs air attack. Battles the Texas Longhorns ground assault. It's the best of the Southwest on Raycom. Here's today's game tracer brought to you by the Schick Tracer. Michael James punt return briefly brought Arkansas within three. They have kept it on the ground about four times as often as they've thrown it. All 50 yards on the ground, 170 through the air. Five for five on scoring opportunities. They just now will uh, head to the field and look at first and 10 from the 21 yard line. Tech 5 for 5 on scoring chances inside the Arkansas 35. Last week they began five possessions in Texas ter territory and none of those five produced points. So what a turnaround in the span of one week as Lynn goes off right tackle. Tallahassee and Florida State maintains its perfect record. Get ready for Miami. Gain of three yards for Anthony Lynn at second and seven. All day for Robert Hall and he spots Lynn Rowe who hangs on to it despite the pop delivered by Collins. 41 yards. What else you can want in a wide receiving tandem than what Blackshear and Hill give you? And it all starts up front. Look at the time he has. He can look downfield. He's got all the time. You just don't run 35, 40-yard patterns without those big offensive linemen giving you all the time you need. Hill 6'2", 185. Strong enough to withstand that Collins hit. Ball again. Too much time and the keeper inside the 30 before Ty Mason, the backup middle linebacker, brings down Hall. I know Hall is a scrambler and I and I you love to watch him scramble, but I can promise you on the sideline, every time he runs up through there, a large lump comes in Spike Dykes' throat saying. Think? Oh, absolutely. Because he has no depth right now. Jamie Gill is not ready to step in. He's He's been hurt. He's been trying to come back from that. If he loses Hall, he goes to a very rusty Jamie Gill. The healthiest Gill's been in a month, but rust is the key word. He's got a lot of it on him. Morris, left tackle to the 21. First down. And the Red Raiders can regain that 17-point lead they had at one point when it was 24 to 7. If they do that, with 12.24 to go fourth quarter, then you force Wade Hill into a passing game. You get to tee off on him, and everything should change for Arkansas's offensive strategy. And you're been, if you're on the defensive side of the ball right now in that huddle, they're saying, rip the ball out, try to get that fumble, hard hit, tackle the football. Hooper right, Blackshear left, first and ten. And the quick hitter. 
Lewis Sheffield will carry to the one. The ball is loose and recovered out of the back of the end zone. Was he down or not? Remember, the ground cannot call it, cause a fumble. You see Arkansas all pointing, saying, hey, that ball was out of there. Royal Jackson's crew huddles. They say he was down, and it's first and goal. Again, Dave, the ground cannot cause a fumble. It's the knee where the knee is down. Let's watch the tail end of this. Watch when his knee is down and he is down. The knee's down. There's the ball coming out. The only call to make, and they got it right. You see he still has control of the ball. The knee is down. The ball, even though he has, doesn't have great control, the ball was still in his control. From the one. Touchdown. Lewis Sheffield, somewhere on the bottom of that pile. And there is a man who sees his visions of New Year's Day in Dallas slowly evaporating. Well, you look at one play that perhaps can change the entire complexion of the football. If that ball comes out an instant earlier, that turns the entire drive around. Well, he did good for the extra point, and it's 38-21. Fourth touchdown of the year for Lewis Sheffield. Again, just switch up the middle. Just find that little seam, put your head down, and power in. Well, Arkansas has been a turnaround team all year. They really have to live up to that with 11.40 to go. It's happening. Some people are climbing out of their imports and getting into the 1992 Buick Regal sedan. Why? One simple, overwhelming consideration. Quality. Buick quality. It's something you might want to get into yourself. Regal from Buick. The new symbol for quality in America and beyond. How to improve your home involves some difficult decisions. You know, we could use a bigger kitchen. Nuh-uh. A new bath. Uh-uh. Kitchen. A new bath. We could use a... At NCNB, we don't think financing should be one of them. Okay, a bath. Upstairs. Upstairs? That's why we've set up a loan information line. Call with your questions or stop by and see a loan specialist. Then tell us what's on your mind. Okay, I got it. A garage. Uh-uh. A deck. A garage. 1-800-ASK-NCNB. Sweetheart. The loan source. Yes? I want a deck. Check this out. Ouch! I'm sick of dating. You gotta fake it. So much madness, you just can't take it. Hey, don't go through this. I know what feels good. While the best thing's always so misunderstood. Just give me what the doctor ordered. Dr. Just what the doctor ordered. They give you a Dr. Pepper. We want it. Whoa, just what the doctor ordered. The taste is made to order. We love it. Dr. Pepper. My heart's with the hogs, but my kid is a, my kid is a Raider. I see it. <laughs> he can't lose. He can't possibly come away unhappy. Ball blown off the tee. 38-21 Tech after a six-play, 79-yard scoring drive. And fitting that Sheffield get the touchdown because he's the guy that put him in position at the one. Will this one find the not whole game? On a hop? Nope, not quite. Well, Raycom presents Blockbuster Bowl 2, Saturday night, December 28th, from Joe Robbie Stadium in sunny South Florida. Last year's game between Florida State and Penn State was considered by many the best bat matchup of all the bowls of 1990, and Blockbuster Bowl 2 promises to be just as exciting. Be sure and join us Saturday night, December 28th. Well, Arkansas with some bowl uh, hopes besides the Cotton Bowl. Independence, Liberty, some others considering the Hogs. E.D. Jackson goes off right tackle, and there's a lot of time left, 11 and a half minutes, but at what point does Crow have to go 
almost exclusively through the air. He's down 17 points. Well, I think right now is the time. I think you're going to keep him honest with it. Maybe a first down run, but I think right now he's got to pass on second and third down yard yardage situations. Because if I'm on the defensive side of the football, I'd like to have you run. I'd get slow getting up off the pile. Just let that clock just keep on ticking down. Second and seven, Jackson again. First down and chased out. He'll stop the clock at the 38 yard line. Quincy White giving chase into 42 for Tech. They hear the bowl possibilities. Aggies, of course, uh, in the driver's seat for the Cotton Bowl, unbeaten in conference play. Arkansas, if they come back here somehow and win the rest, will go to the Cotton. If not, the Independents at Liberty are interested. Texas could go to the Cotton. If Arkansas loses and Texas wins the rest of their games, they'll be in Dallas. Otherwise, Freedom Peach, Hancock possibilities. Baylor being looked at by the Co uh, Copper Bowl and TCU being looked at by the Independence Bowl, but they probably need to finish with seven wins. Jackson again chased out of bounds. Those projections uh, by USA Today all subject to change as the bold picture constantly does. Those, are, those last two plays are really surprising for me, Dave. I'm, you have just got to air this football out. You've got to throw it downfield, especially when you think about how long Texas Tech has been able to drive the football. They've had drives of 79 yards, 80 yards, 78 yards, 50 yards, 45 yards. Second and 11 for Dale Johnson back in. And the redshirt freshman might have lost another yard. Fred Petty had the quick penetration. Boy, and hasn't Fred Petty played well this year? Number 77 in the middle. Crowds the ball. Doesn't let the center come off. Stands the center up. Now watch. Good reaction back to the football. That's just a super play for a nose tackle. And look what happens to Damon Wickwear, number 13, who did the splits underneath Petty and is still down. And the trainer's quickly out to look at it. Any one of a number of things could have uh, resulted from Fred Petty at 270 pounds rolling backwards on him. And we'll take a break with 10.37 to go. 38-21, Red Raiders. When you play the game, you're looking good. That's the Bud Light way that underdog. When you're looking good, you want Bud Light. The clean, fresh taste won't fill you up and never let you down. You can taste it, you can feel it. You know you got it right. If your face were square, shaving would be simple. If your face were flat, any razor would do. But your face has curves. You need the revolutionary Schick Tracer, the first razor with a blade that flexes to trace every curve on your face. Compared to other razors, Tracer puts more of the blade edge against your skin. For real faces, just like yours. Tracer from Schick traces every curve on your face. The Mitsubishi 3000 GT, Motor Trend Import Car of the Year. The stunning new Mitsubishi Eclipse for 1992. Nothing livens up a family like a little sibling rivalry. Mitsubishi, the word is getting around. The 92 Eclipse, available now at your Dallas Fort Worth area Mitsubishi Motors dealer. favoring the left leg and we'll wait to hear whether it's the knee or ankle or what it is it's third and 11 Arkansas down 17 this is a big play Dickerson with the grab spins off one hit but he'll be a yard or two shy at the 45 and you wouldn't wonder this about most coaches but you never know with Jack Crow will he go for it on fourth and about two well, I don't see the quarterback coming out of the ball game so the decision is to go for it. 
And I'll tell you, he's gotten away with fourth downs. He made that one early in this game. He also made the one against Texas on fourth down and one on his own 19-yard line leading the football game. So here they go. And he had Dickerson open and way over his head. Well, Pro had the right play. Oh yes, it was a great, it was a great call. What he was going to do is he was going to look strong side and completely just give everybody the impression that he was going to go strong side, which is his to right. See, he never looks back. Now, last second, boom, look down and find Dickerson, but he just floats the ball way over top of his head. Never had a chance. Look at all the coaches just hanging their heads there saying, oh boy, we had it. They did have it, but the Raiders take it at the Hog 45, and they'll look for the knockout punch now. Anthony Lynn carries right side for three yards, and the Raiders will try and let the clock roll with 9.25 and counting. One of the interesting things to watch in this situation is the quarterback looking at the time clock when they start that 25-second clock. He can see it down the end zone, and he walks up slowly, just kind of creeps up there. And uses the time that he can. Kansas by three over Nebraska at halftime. Anthony McDowell with great second effort. That's one thing that he always gives you. And you, you talked about that. One guy has a real hard task in trying to bring him down alone. He got the first down inside the Hog 35 yard line. Underway in Dallas. Nice. 3-0 underway in the Astrodome. And why not stay on the ground if you're tough? McDowell may have gotten a half yard at the most. And it'll be second and about 10 still. Monday night, December 30th on Raycom, it's the Freedom Bowl from Anaheim, California. Last year, Colorado State and Oregon State battled in what a lot of people thought was the year's most exciting bowl game. So make plans to join us on December 30th for the Freedom Bowl. Word on Damon Wickwear is he sprained his left knee and will not return. And that's no surprise if you saw what Penny land on him the way he did. All with time, and that'll draw a flag against Michael James. He interferes with Lloyd Hill on the crossing pattern. And I don't think that Hill was going to have a chance to catch this football, and James just kind of gave him a little shot late. And you can see him saying, I was after the ball, coach. <laughs> That's what they call the referees, coach. Let's check the Red Raiders scoring drives today. 12-6-3-13. And six yards. And for the lack of flags and the extent of all these scoring drives, and then several by Arkansas as well, uh, some, some lessons are starting to take hold here as we get into November. Obviously, the coach is getting some things across and the execution getting better for both these teams in those departments. Ball gets away from pressure. Lots of flags fly, and he'll sail it out of bounds. Might have uh, Henry Ford being held. He was the Arkansas defensive lineman pressuring Robert Hall, and that will be the call. You know, I almost had the feeling that time when Hall saw the flags, he just threw the ball out of bounds. Knew it was a holding call, and rather than risk throwing an interception, he just kind of threw it out of bounds. It looked like it, and that's, that's exactly what he should have done. Well, if he can see flags flying in there, he's got great vision. See, he just turns... The flags are there, and again, he just throws the ball out of bounds. There's no one over here. Now he sees the flags, just throws the ball over here on the sidelines. There's no one within 10 yards of that ball. Another big day for Hall. And he has rushed 12 times for 56 yards in the touchdown. On first. 25, 26 actually, from where they marked the penalty. Intended for McDowell. 
And uh, Dykes would prefer, of course, for that clock to continue rolling. It stops with 7.51 to go. So you look where they had first down on the 29-yard line. They had a first down. Now they're facing second down on the 45-yard line. You know, Tech can still finish with a winning record. They have two more after today. They can finish six and five. They'd settle for that after the injury plague start this year. Draw play to McDowell. To the 39. Darwin Ireland on the ankle tackle on Anthony McDowell. Bring up third and 20. I just had a weird thought for a second. I thought about Lynn Elliott kicking a field goal with the wind at his back. We saw how far he kicked with the uh, on the kickoffs. Now he's going to, they're going to have one more down to pick up yardage, but we're looking at if he kicks it from here, that'd be about a 58 yarder. Incomplete for Blackshear, a little low, but he's upset and thinks he should have had it, and it'll be fourth and 20. And on comes Elliott. And uh, the strength of the leg should be no question on this 58-yard kick. It's just whether he can hit the narrower goal post. What a yard gale behind him. They'll mark it at the 47. It'll actually be 57. His best is 52. Nope. Plenty of leg. But not quite for Lynn Elliott. And a timeout with 7.02 to play. Tech by 17. We return after this from Southwest Airlines. Ever since Southwest Airlines extended our Friends Fly Free sale, people have gotten even friendlier. Sugar Plum, your favorite pillow. If you make reservations and buy your round-trip ticket at our regular low, unrestricted fare, a friend gets to fly with you free all the way through February. Hey, Dad, seen the head shimmer? And now you can buy tickets till January 15th. Here's that putter I borrowed last year, old buddy. Southwest Airlines Friends Fly Free sale. It's great for your pocketbook and your popularity. Saturday on Raycom, Southwest Conference excitement continues. The TCU Horn Frogs air attack. Battles the Texas Longhorns ground assault. It's the best of the Southwest on Raycom. Well, not a whole lot of question now that Wade Hill has got to go to the air. 7.02 left, Arkansas 17 down. And this is for the Cotton Bowl. You have got to pull the stops out. And the first walk-on quarterback to start for Arkansas since Mike Scott started against Oklahoma State back in 1976. Will go first and 10 from his 39. In the second half, only 39 total yards for Arkansas. And he hangs it up for Caldwell, who could not get through the coverage of Donnie Brooks. That's an interesting call. You see Caldwell turned around and won interference, but Brooks really had position on him. And he just kind of slowed down in front of him, didn't allow him to go get the football. Here's a guy who could go a number of ways. Academic scholarship, 4.0 student. Obviously has some talent in the area of football. And when that season's over, he grabs a trombone and plays in the Hogwild basketball band. He and Isaac Davis. Both football band uh, participants for Dale Johnson on the ground. And the clock rolls at 643. I also might think about going without a huddle. Yeah, I think about hurry up offense in this situation thing that comes to my mind and has all day all game is how much they are limited how much Arkansas has been limited by the by the injury to Jason Allen they have just cut their offense in half not running wise but certainly passing third and a long six and the screen to Johnson 
That one block has the first down. Might go. Anthony Wiley with the angle will bring him down near the 20. And Cordale Johnson, who before today had not carried the ball for Arkansas, goes 38 yards with the screen pass. Well, it's a very safe pass out to the flat. I mean, what he does best is he picks up his block right here. It's a great block right there by his guard. You see number 60 there. That's Mosier. He kicks him outside. Now he picks up and goes down the sideline. His first collegiate catch. And he sets up Arkansas at the Red Raider 21. Six minutes to go. Hill again overthrows Dickerson. Very similar pass as to the fourth down incompletion on their previous possession. But you can see he's airing it out now. You've got to have 17 points in six minutes. You've got to throw the football. Dickerson again wide left. Vincent Davis, a true freshman from Birmingham, wide right. And they go draw play and they pull no one. Jackson Berry back at the 26. By Sean Jackson. What happened on that play, Dave, is it took so long to develop. Watch how long it takes for him to get back to the fullback. And there's Sean Jackson. He's on a pass rush, just makes the adjustment and picks up the running back on the draw. Just a sophomore. Worst passing team in the conference, and with 99 yards today, that's better than an average day for them. Third and 14. Hill again overthrows Ron Dickerson on the left sideline. And now a fight breaking out at the 30. And quickly stepping in is Doyle Jackson. That is uh, Sean Jackson involved for Tech. Boy, and, and if Cody you're... Mosier, the left tackle for Arkansas. And if you're Spike Dykes, you're saying, I hope that's not against my man. If you're Jack Crow, you're saying, boy, I hope it's not offsetting. The official tried to step in, and it is going to be against Tech. The official tried to st step in and stop it. Well, look at you, Dice. Oh, boy. You can see that's what you call an earful. Son, you don't make mistakes when you're in this situation. So Sean Jackson will uh, take a spot on the sideline. That was going to be, it was going to be fourth down, I believe, and about, what, 13 or 14 yards to go. It's going to give him a first down. Well, he and Mosier going at one another all day, and it boils over at the worst possible time for Dyson. He gets a personal audience for Sean Jackson. And the Hogs go from the 15 with 5.13 to play. They trail 38 to 21. And as soon as Doyle Jackson signals it ready for play, Hill will step in. Bryson Jackson behind him in the eye. And a whistle before the snap. That had to be on the center while the lineman had to jump. That was that that flag was thrown before the ball was even stepped. Hey, we may be able to see this left guard, I think. Look at the left guard. Oh, there's the flinch. You see the official right there? He saw the flinch also. That's on Tommy Jones. Look a relatively mistake-free game. And now back to back flag. So first and 15, they back up to the 18. And keep it on the ground to E.D. Jackson. Only three, and the clock rolls down near the five-minute mark. Michigan keeps piling it on. Still 3-0 in Dallas for the Owls over the Mustangs. And Texas blocks the extra point by Roman Anderson, who had the second longest PAT string in college football history. So it's 6-0 after the Houston touchdown. Here it will, out 
Jackson Cooper to the nine. Alicio rides him down. And it'll be third and five at four and a half minutes to go. Well, there's no doubt about going on fourth down here. I can promise you that. They've got two downs to pick up about five and a half, almost six yards. And you just have to figure that with Hill's inexperience, they don't feel comfortable going without a hunt. Because they're using just about every bit of time they had when this drive began to try to get within 10. They needed three scores when this drive began. And they'll be lucky to get the ball back even if they score this time. Bradley is the tailback. And he will keep, but only to the nine. Fred Petty chased him. It'll be fourth down. Or if you're on offense, that clock ticking down sounds like bong, bong, bong. And it just, they're, they're not in any hurry to run a play. They're just kind of milling around. That's really a surprise to me. You only got three and a half minutes left. You've got a good chance to score right here and get the football back. But I remember when there was six minutes on this drive. They've used a lot of time, Dave. They're on the roll. Looks to the end zone to Caldwell and come down with his foot out of bounds because Caldwell came, came away clean with the football. He just didn't get a foot down in bounds, evidently. A hair late, but perfectly thrown by Hill. Just too late to keep Caldwell in bounds. Now watch, once the catch is, watch the feet. You can see the foot comes down on the line. So the Arkansas drive turned away the Red Raider nine and also turned away with three called to play the Arkansas hopes for the Cotton Bowl. Accidents happen when you're in a hurry and not careful. Don't wreck your life. It's happening. Some people are climbing out of their imports and getting into the 1992 Buick Regal sedan. Why? One simple, overwhelming consideration. Quality. Buick quality. It's something you might want to get into yourself. Regal from Buick, the new symbol for quality in America and beyond. Well, for the first time in about a month, Jamie Gill, the senior from Hirschfeld, is going to see action. Two injuries have kept him out in that month. As Morris carries to the 12, he had a sprained arch. He also had a malady, which doctors describe as Sam Adams-itis. <laughs> in the shoulder that Adams, the Aggie uh, freshman defensive lineman, landed on. And uh, those two have kept him out, but what he did against Arkansas may be as good a performance last year as any Texas Tech quarterback has ever put on. Fifteen of eighteen, three touchdowns through the air. He kept for two on the ground. That Arkansas had 582 total yards, a Red Raider road record. Yes. First down and swarmed at the 21 and 222 to go. And you talk about experience when you watch Jamie Gill. He's looking at that 25 second clock using every second of it. Tech record to four and five, and it evens their conference record at three and three as we check the all row quarterback candidates after this play. You've been waiting. We will finally <laughs> deliver that information. See how five seconds, four, three. And 
Anthony McDowell dragging four hogs or Sheffield it is near the 28 yard line. And those all row quarterback candidates for the team which will be revealed November 30th. Well, some great candidates. Richardson, gosh, what more can you say about him, the way he's led his football team? J.J. Joe has had magic this year for Baylor. And, of course, David Klingler, 34 NCAA records. He came in today needing one more touchdown pass to be the all-time Southwest Conference career leader in that category. A minute 19 as Lynn takes the pitch left. Arkansas is going to drop to five and four, four and two in the conference, two losses, and you never go to the Cotton Bowl with the exception of Houston in 84. But the vast majority of people who follow this conference expected them to be out of the Cotton Bowl race after about their second conference game. And what a tribute to Jack Crow, his team has been outgained in every game they've played. There is no statistical explanation for Arkansas this year. They're the Agatha Christie of the Southwest Conference, and they, they last well into November. In their final year in the conference, final shot at the Cotton Bowl will die in a minute and six seconds. On how fitting that the only team to beat Arkansas in this string of 16 games here is here today to be honored. Arkansas timeout. With 106 remaining, 38-21 Tech. It isn't the night or even the fog that gets you. It's when the team leader puts you in charge for the first time. And you decide to drop right inside Alpha Team's backyard. That's when you find out how good you really are. Because most of our flights are short, this is what our meals look like on Southwest Airlines. It's also what our fares look like. Southwest Airlines. Southwest Airlines has one of the best on-time records in the country. Mr. Smith, you're early. Just something to remember. Southwest Airlines. Today's Southwest Airlines player of the game is Robert Hall, who threw for 219 yards and a score and rushed for 56 yards and a score. The sophomore from Dallas Carter, our Southwest Airlines player of the game. Robert Hall can sit and enjoy the final 106 of this Tech victory over Arkansas, only their second win ever in Lubbock over the Razorbacks. And both times they win in this stadium against Arkansas, it costs Arkansas their Cotton Bowl hopes. That carried by Bruce Hill. Back up, by back. In 66, Arkansas was number six in the nation, eight and one. Their last game of the year at Tech, which had won only three. And J.T. King's Red Raiders cross the Hogs, Dallas, on New Year's Day. They honor that 1966 team on the 25th anniversary. And Terry McWhorter, who was a co-captain and defensive end for that Tech team and is suffering from Lou Gehrig's disease, being honored this weekend, they have established an athletic scholarship fund, the McWhorter Honorary Scholarship. And if you're interested in uh, contributing to that, 1-800-725-5263. 1-800-725-5263. And as we thank all of those who help bring you Southwest Conference football on Raycon. The unbeatable stat spotter tandem of Kirk McCarley and Charlie Durker is always. Inside a minute. We also want to thank the people that we look forward to working with whenever we do Arkansas football, and this being our final telecast of Arkansas football on Raycom, for the foreseeable future anyway. Athletic director Frank Broyles, Jack Crow, extremely cooperative, all his staff, and sports information director Rick Schaefer and his staff. 
Uh, we'll, we'll miss him. We wish him all the best in the SEC. Stopped on the final Arkansas timeout of the game with 40 seconds to go. We understand in this Texas Houston game that Gardere was sacked and left the game injured. Well, that would be Chad Lucas, the freshman in charge of the biggest game of the year to date for Texas. Leading uh, the first win of the Dome in six years to stay in the Cotton Bowl race, which is really down to two teams. It's Texas and Texas A&M. And if Houston beats Texas, or is the clearing ever brighter for the Aggies from here on out? They would have an even more open path. Morris to the 46. So another quarterback, at least temporarily, goes down. And he joins this list. That's not all the list. There's a second page for <laughs> Well, Gardera will be now. Look at the number of quarterbacks that have gone down this season. Three for two Two in their game against A&M on Thursday night. Clock inside 20 seconds. On the final play of the game, it is Bruce Hill. As for only the second time in the history of the series, Tech can celebrate a home win over Arkansas. our final and we'll have a final word from Lubbock in a moment. Buying a new car involves some difficult decisions. Okay, let's see. Four door? Uh, not two door. Hey, maybe no doors. At NCNB, we don't think financing should be one of them. Well, you got to be kidding. That's why we've set up a loan information line. Call with your questions or stop by and see a loan specialist. Way too fast. Then move on to the really difficult decisions. Okay, red. No blue. Maybe white. 1 800 Ask NCNB. Two tone? The loan source. Turn on Raycom and turn on excitement. The network of college football's preseason classics. A full season of high octane Southwest Conference action. Two of the top postseason bowl games. And all winter long, college basketball. For the best in sports, turn on Raycom. So it is down to a two-team race for the Cotton Bowl. Texas Tech eliminating Arkansas, 38 to 21. Your final thoughts? Well, Dave, your back lead. I hate to see Arkansas leave this conference because there's been so many great football games, but they go on, of course, to the Southeast Conference. And we wish them well in that conference. We just can't emphasize enough the job that Jack Crow did to even get them this far. Well, they certainly did. They had a wonderful season to come back from last year where they only won one conference game to come back and be in contention. This late for the Cotton Bowl is, again, quite a tribute to Jack Crow and his staff. And Spike Dykes turning the Red Raiders season around, and they can still finish with a winning record. They play like they did today. That looks like a very good probability. Dave Rowe, this is Dave Barnett. Be with us next Saturday at noon as the TCU Horn Frogs take on the Texas Longhorns. This has been a copyrighted presentation of Raycom.